Yes, banter. Back and forth, banter, banter. And we're live. Oh, hello, everybody. Sorry. Welcome, everybody. Welcome, friends. This is the Heroes Era. I'm your Dungeon Master, Ben, and we are playing a game of Dungeons and Dragons. And joining me tonight, I have Joel playing Mordecai. Let's cast some fireballs, shall we? And Bodhi as Reynold. Hi, I'm here this time. Don't worry, I won't disappear again. Arctic Wolf as Yoshiruke. Let's drink, shall we? Mitch as Mr. Misbit. You know, I got this pace. No one's eating it. I am so sorry. I was completely unprepared. <laughs> I just remember exactly who he's playing. And this is going to be so much fun. <laughs> and uh, Chris will be joining us shortly. He's bracing for the impending hurricanes in Florida. So, I mean, I hope he's safe out there battening down the hatches for, I think it's for his mother-in-law. He's a good boy. Um, but, of course, tonight... We are telling a story, but we do not yet know how it will go. The players, the dungeon master, the dice, all the of dice. these will have a hand in how the game unfolds. This is the hero's era. And um, the party has grown recently, uh, having been joined by Mr. Misbit as well as Yoshiruke. And uh, Yoshiruke has a project that... He's been working on helping to head up in Trikeshnia. And it involves the Grapha. And um, the Grapha is a mega block structure um, from ancient times, uh, the origins of which are kind of disputed. And along the way, you met Mr. Misbit, um, a very helpful warforged. Uh, and a bit of a character as well. And so there were some difficulties in your travels, but you did make it to Trikeshnia. And when you reached the Grafa, um, you met with Commander Plass, who is a fellow commander of Brahms. And she took you below because the reason you had been uh, directed to go there or originally summoned by Brahms uh, to meet him in Trikeshnia is because of your previous dealings with these uh, black tentacles that seem to be coming from the, the depths of the realm here. And so uh, she showed you the tentacles that had emerged after they had um, cleared the ground surrounding the Grafa. And... Uh, she basically wanted to, uh, you know, eat your brain and gain your knowledge, so to speak, uh, regarding this issue. And uh, hopefully not literally. Sorry, I guess we can't make jokes like that in D&D &D because she could be a number of... Mind flare. Yeah. <laughs> but nonetheless, so um, she asked you to share your experience, um, you know, experiences with these tentacles. And... Um, you did. You told her of the battles with them, how they had overtaken Surgug, and the uh, how they had drawn the Slatty to them. And um, she also, um, you know, provided you with a meal. And Yoshiruke basically had passed out in ex in exhaustion. Um. <laughs> And we can jump into the game um, from there. And Commander Plaz has requested this private audience with you all. And she seems quite horrified uh, at the description of Sergog, who had been impaled and suspended by the tentacles. And she says uh, to you, Mordecai, you mentioned a spell book uh, from the Shrine of Anhur and a book with Therizessa's studies of the Mystery Stone. Yes, I believe I possess one of those currently. I see. I do uh, know of the other's location, but 
It isn't anywhere around here. Well, would you mind showing the book to Magpie? Of course, I, I do have the, the magic book, the spell book. Oh, wonderful. I don't know if it'll be of any use to you. Yes, Magpie is heading up the mages here that are contributing to the project. She's a renowned wizard. Um, you're all welcome to join us, uh, of course. I see Chris is logged in, so I'm going to admit him and swap around the visuals real quick here. Yes. Welcome, Chris. Welcome. Hey, guys. Oh, hey. my gosh. It's the live, main character. <clears throat> He's here. He's he here. Grab onto that cow to get back. It's almost like he hurt <laughs> me. Um, everything went well with the hurricane and all. I'm assuming. Is well, well, I mean, the, the the hurricane ain't here yet, but okay, okay. Um, <clears throat> we were uh, just getting stuff set up where I had to had to go over to my mother in law's house and get. She's got like a pool out there and stuff, so we had to go tie down all our uh, patio equipment and whatnot, so it doesn't get blown into the neighbor's yard. I see. I feel I see. so dumb. <laughs> I thought the hurricane was a joke this entire time. I didn't know it was. No, real. it's real. No, there's actually one coming. <clears throat> I thought you guys were just exaggerating. No, no, <laughs> no. This ain't no cover story. It's not a work. Um, so welcome, and we basically just summed up uh, what transpired last session. And um, Commander Plass asked Mordecai to. Uh, meet with Magpie and share the magical tome that he had collected. Okay, cool. Uh, Magpie seems to be a resident wizard. Um, <clears throat> of course, uh, whoever wishes to come is welcome. Well, um, I got nowhere else to be. Might as well tag along. Ah, very well. We'll make a group of it. And uh, ramps ascend the perimeter of the Grafa. Commander Plas leads you up. And there's a steel grate for a door. This lift will take us to the hilt. And um, Magpie's tower is on top of the Grafa. The lift ascends for several minutes, passing many landings that lead to hallways or large open chambers. Um, most... Uh, Commander Plas speaks to you. Most of the wealthy refuse to leave the Grafa. I warned them that we are not certain the thing will remain stable when we turn it. That they're most stubborn. Uh, I am. I got some files from before my last shutdown. Just one about the tentacles. It's all video. I could show you. I got I got minor illusion. I could show them. Oh. It sounds horrid. So I just like project it on the wall for you guys with my eyes. They like light up like a theater projector. <laughs> It'll be like from Mr. Misfit's point of view. You can see like trees and there's fog rising. There's two dwarves traveling with him. One of them is wearing a medallion of Gond and the other one's wearing a medallion with the symbol of Joaquin on it. And they're heading towards the Grafa. And it starts to cut out a little bit. And you can see the tentacles from before wrapping around them. And then it cuts out. And then he powers back up and sees you guys on the... Um, what was it? The rail cart? Where, that's what that was, right? That we were on? Yes. I don't know how much it'll help, but... You know, the tentacles were there. In the rail cart encounter? No, um, before he powered down. Forgive me. When he was powered up last time. And so you reach the top of the lift, and the top of the Grafa has dozens of buildings constructed upon it. Exquisite architecture and lush green gardens of varying styles 
can be found along a cobbled street. Here and there, people rush to and from shops and buildings, carrying out whatever business they might need to um, and whatever they might be able to do before the turning of the Grafa. Um, well, here it is, and there's a large marble tower uh, stretching at a precarious 45-degree angle over the edge of the Grafa, suspended by magic, no doubt. And when you enter, the interior of the tower uh, has not been tilted with the exterior. That is, the room is uh, quite level, despite the outward appearance of the tower. And there are a handful of desks with shelves of books. Several students sit in quiet study. And there are birds of all kinds perched on potted trees or on the bookshelves chirping and singing. And Plas speaks to an elf who strides forward and we have the whole party here within the tower i'm assuming um yeah i think we all followed yeah. right okay. i think so please tell magpie i have an important guess and the elf gasps as he sees mordecai's face and he quickly pulls a small vial that he drops upon the ground while saying words of magic casting protection from good and evil this is one of Makazel's <laughs> devils Surely oh. you'd not bring Belial himself? No, that's no. him. That no, that's him. No, <laughs> no, that's him. No, that's him. No, that's him. No, I'm doing business with mortals. Yeah, us mortals. <laughs> hey, look, it's pretty rad to have a devil on your side. You know, it, it, it you get a lot of power. <laughs> my friends, my friends, the holy man says no. Um, the, my, our, our, our friend here, and he is a friend, um, unfortunately was tricked, um, into putting on a, a, a cursed mask. Uh, the mask is adhered to his face. He cannot remove it. I, I, um, I mean, it has no other trick. Uh, trick is a strong word. I mean, I have one too. And Randall pulls out his mask. It is a strange also thing to joke off. about. Joke. There's nothing else to joke about, so here we are. With my one free arm, I pull mine off, and it's just like a... You can see just the little white wisp guys pulling on levers like this and pushing gears. <laughs> okay, and Brando just kind of puts his mask over his face. that cover it. Uh, well then, um... I will Believe me, this face is a lot nicer than the one underneath. <laughs> oh, you all have a strange sense of humor. Jules, this guy's pretty strange. <laughs> uh, the elf here. excuses himself. Will this help? Uh, I'm sorry? I'm going to say here, will this help? And I'm going to use uh, disguise self to make myself look like him. Oh, oh! I'm so sorry. I think he's taken some of your here. some of your essence. Oh no, Commander Plas, I will entertain your important company. Um, let me fetch Lady Magpie. I'll be right back. It was a pleasure. A I, I hear pleasure. people are more comfortable with those who look like themselves. You know, so I'm trying to make him more comfortable around me. Yeah, we love skinwalkers. Yeah, <laughs> did you know? <laughs> A magpie is the only bird that recognizes itself. Mm. Did not know that. This guy's got bird facts. That's smart. Very interesting. Well then. Well, thank uh, you. Yes. We won't keep yeah, you any yeah. longer. Thank you. Thank you so much. Yeah, thank yeah, you. yeah, yeah. Thank yes. you. What the hell was that, guys? <laughs> Look, <laughs> I've been out of it for like, I would say at least <laughs> a bit, I okay? Went, I think that went better than expected. You know what? Nothing's on fire. I'm just going to let this one. I've been really introspective gonna... lately, and I feel I did a lot of thinking, and you know, I got to bring more more fun here. Okay, Jules you know Barry, she's a function Jules... suitable for social Jules... situations. <laughs> you know what? The roof is not on fire. I call that a victory. <sighs> Fair enough. Jules very noticeably moves towards the back of the group, and is just he's he's going to sit this one out. <laughs> <laughs> He's going to let it happen. Let's see what happens. I time. think inviting all of you may have been a mistake, says Commander yeah. Pass. <laughs> no. You know, what are you some, talking some about? Of us, some Perfectly of us really lack people's skills. 
and a don't door. Worry, don't worry, the, I'm here. The same door that the elf used to exit opens, and um, a lady steps through. Her eyes glow green. Her head is plumed like a bird, and she approaches with long, flowing robes. Ah, Yoshiruke, you're early. Indeed. And you've brought friends. Hello. I wouldn't call them friends, but they are still no, here. That's... I'm sad. Well, and we've brought gifts. Gifts? Yeah. I love gifts. This guy. I mean, points towards Yoshiruke. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I'm familiar with Yoshiruke. Well, he's alive. You're welcome. <laughs> <laughs> You don't understand how much I had to do to keep this guy alive. <laughs> he had like a death curse or something. I don't know what it was. What do you mean? Oh, some stray griffins were just absolutely <laughs> a menace. I see, but I, see. I, I did my best. Yeah, a lot of stuff happened. Griffins are beautiful Anyways. creatures. And we brought well, this. Yeah, I'm sorry. What? What? Uh, you, stranger. And uh, I had her the book, the spell book that's been so coveted so far. And Commander Plas introduces each of your names to Magpie. Oh, and uh, the plume atop Magpie's head leans forward. Her curiosity clearly peaked. Oh yes. Hmm. Well, what's what is it about? Um, I do love books, as you can see. Is there something special in here? Um, it's a book of spells mm. that taught me how to do this. And I'm going to cast out of range of anyone who is currently around me. I'm going to cast uh, Everge Black Tentacles just as a demonstration to show her the, the power that uh, was bestowed to me by the book. Oh, and as you do so, Lady Magpie speaks quickly and claps, and the tentacles are dispersed. Well, that is beautiful. I don't want to alarm the students. <clears throat> I've never seen that. You call it Evard's Black Tentacles? Uh, it's it's a book that I learned through this spell book. Hmm. It was the only secret I was able to unearth. Although, might I'm I sure see? there's more. Might I see the book? Of course. Uh, would you show me the part about summoning them? Uh, no. I'll change the chapter. Like, <laughs> I'll skip to that chapter. I imagine it's like a chapter book. Yeah, he, he dog-eared <laughs> the end of... Well, it's like, like dark tentacles... <laughs> Oh, wow, wow, and you can cast that. Hmm. But as you said, there is more, and Magpie flips the pages of the tome quickly, deftly with feathered fingers. Where did you get this book? Well, uh, we had an encounter with some... It's complicated. Uh, yeah, but uh, it, was, it was near... Are we doing or everything? <clears throat> no. It was um a person. During basically basically it was just during a, a chance encounter we had with some with some uh <clears throat> some creatures, some ne'er do wells, so to speak. Um bit of a little bit of a cult thing going on that we dealt yeah. with for some people for, in exchange for some coin and this was something that was in the room that we found of interest. <clears throat> mm, there some like... So we've been looking for someone that could uh you know, make use with make use of it in a um, you know not evil way. Right. Well, knowledge is certainly not necessarily evil. This part here it <laughs> describes controlling the tentacles. Uh, you say that you fought these tentacles. Were they yeah, being like controlled? One yes. It almost seemed more like they were doing the controlling, honestly. <laughs> yeah, oh, it's really? also true. They were different. But yeah. The second time we come into these things, were they? Was it similar it was... to Sir Good, where they were um, like connected? 
Because Circo definitely was. I think so. It was almost as if uh, these tentacles had taken over something. Yeah, right. they seem more like parasitic in nature than they are yes. symbiotic. More a uh, living creature versus a conjured yeah. effect. I see. Then do you think Surga tried to manipulate them, but they overcame him? No, it was more of like a like a uh, ritual <clears throat> that was being cast on him, from what I can remember, and you know, from what I can guess, it was more of something that was being put onto him than him trying to attempt. Yeah, he was not. He was not a voluntary participant in it. No, no. The second thing, though, the second time we ran into him, it might have been. It is a possibility. Yeah, I definitely could see it happening. Well, you said he was not willing the first time. You mean somebody was casting a spell on him? Yeah, he thought he was getting something else in return, and it, that spell ended up being cast on him, and then he got snatched. I see, I see. Well, um, Master Mordecai, what is your biggest kaboom? The most powerful magic you have. Currently, within my arsenal, um, I'm sure if he didn't have that mask, we would have seen his eyes light up. <laughs> uh, Kaboom! <laughs> like Rico, he's like pulling out like spell tomes. I'm like, I got this from <laughs> from my trip to. Madagascar. And then I got this. Yes, and then I got this one at a gas station. Like that. (laughs) No, uh, my current biggest damaging spell is probably still fireball for single damage. Uh, my biggest area of effect continuous damage is probably sickening radiance. It's a thirty foot radius sphere, so that's sixty foot diameter. Okay. And it's uh. 4d10 every round for a minute. Sorry, now, for up to 10 minutes. And Ooh. I'm familiar with Yoshiruke and Mr. Misbit. Um, you know, oh. I I mean, I was just thinking perhaps we should try this spell on our tentacle friends. Hmm. We can cast sure, this as a not? group. Worth I a also have access to that spell, but... Uh... I can't cast it unless you flip this switch on my back. It it changes me from defense mode to lethal. <laughs> ah, of course. Who's been up there's to a switch? Thing? <laughs> yeah, no, there's a switch, yeah. How many switches do you have? He's got a lot, I imagine. <laughs> I think just the one. The rest are all... Jules is thinking back to the, all the all the all the crap they just went through with him. They're talking about I'm I'm in bodyguard mode, but I can't hurt anybody. <laughs> I start trying to press buttons and see what they do. I, my eyes just start changing color. Outfit changes color. Everything just starts changing color. <laughs> Most of them are just for customization. Yeah, he, he one that. It allows me to actually do damage instead of just trying to defer. If if we flip that, what they like permanent happen to you or No, you can flip it back. Nothing permanent. Alright, I'm just gonna leave that for now. I flick the switch. Oh god. <laughs> <laughs> Alright, well I can cast more spells now. I have the permissions. I have the software permissions to to fireball. What a strange creature. You have no idea. Yeah, I barely even know this person. We're still figuring it out. Uh, well, um, <clears throat> we can cast this as a group, this ritual, but we will need a purple diamond. Um, uh, it's like 250 us. gold. Okay, hold on. Do you have one? Uh, I don't think so. Uh, I can look, and Reno starts looking for a bag. Sure, who holds all the gemstones? Are they in the uh, bag of holding? I'm no, I'm pretty sure I gave them to 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 Reno because yeah, I I have spell a, components. 
Okay. There's I have five hundred on me, five hundred gold worth of gems on me, and there's five twenty five in the bag of holding. So we split them up half and half in case I got like snatched. Okay. Oh, um, oh yeah, yeah. Sorry, I do have it here. Five twenty five. Yeah. Roll a uh, D one hundred for me, and we'll determine whether or not uh, you possess right. one of these by chance. Well, let me just look and highest twenty five percentile. How oh, rare, perfect. Uh, I'm curious. I got this one. That's not purple. That's blue. Oh, uh, what? Yes. Well. Oh, am I color blind? <laughs> well, Maybe, I have but one, we'll deal but with that later. That would explain a lot. I suppose it won't be a waste. I can. I'll tell you what. We could. We could. You said that. You said that, what was the value of it? Two seventy-five. Uh, Two fifty. Two fifty. Okay. Um. I mean, I think we could. If you if you were supplying the gem, we could we could, you know, help to cover the cost. We could pay a portion of it. Would that be acceptable? Well, that blue one's worth a hundred. How about you, give me that one, and then we'll use this one. I hey. yeah. I mean, I, uh, uh, Red, do you need that for any of your your save our life type of spells or anything? Uh, he thinks real hard for a second. Um, mm, not that I can know of. No, I mean any of the bigger ones I'm keeping for you know. Really, really, it hits the fan spells. So yeah, you can have this one. And he hands over the the hundred blue one. Uh, I wonder if this will work. And I cast press to digitation on it to turn it purple. Yeah, I was gonna ask you. Can you change the color of it? Because <laughs> it lets me change the color uh, of something. Uh, perhaps if we were hustling jewelry, Mister. That would be amazing. Yeah. Ooh, can we? <laughs> That sounds fun. Let's Can revisit we... that. Let's Not revisit here, that. But, um, oh, oh. Yeah. oh, yeah. You're kind of like important. Well, nonetheless, um, <clears throat> they don't tolerate crime <laughs> on top of the Grafa, but uh, let us go test this. Well, yeah. what, do you th- yes. what do you say? Let's Are you all up that. to this? I'm down. <laughs> yes. I would Some like to sleep, though. but. Well, I'm not sure we'll be needing you if you do need to sleep. Uh, I think that Yoshiruke and Mordecai and, well, Mr. Misbit will lend to the spell nicely. Oh, I mean, I guess, yeah. I mean, I'm a, I'm I don't a, know how well I could lend to the spell, but I'd like to watch if that's... Yeah. I'm not really a magic guy myself, but... uh, I'm a cleric. I mean, I, I don't know what else I could have, what else I could do. Oh, a cleric. Yeah, no, I can cast magic. But yeah, believe you me, it's just that I'm not like a wizardly type. If anything, I think I'd rather have you on my side than anyone else on this matter. Yeah, I mean, I got this spell that like makes you better at some stuff. I don't know if we're going to need that for anything in particular. Don't you have some smiting spells, too? Uh, we no. have not had a cleric in Trikeshnia for two months. Oh, wow. Uh, well, hello. <laughs> Sounds like... Sounds like good business. What of all the clerics of Joaquin and Gond that were protecting the Grafa? Yes, as you know, many of them have been ordered into battle. I think that is what happened to you. Possibly. I I don't have much memory of the last time I was powered up. Uh, I think I'm supposed to be at the Garafa, but it's kind of fuzzy. It's like the files are corrupted. I can't access them all right now. Well, files alarming. What is he talking about? I, I start to look for like things like tools that you would file down like a weapon with. Files? I don't they're see. like uh. Oh, your files like got memories. corrupted. Oh, Red, you they're got like files, memories. don't you? I uh, uh, remember all pulls of that out a file. Oh, your memory. Okay. Oh, just say your memory. I guess this that kind of works. But it's a, that is confusing. It's I, an impressive metaphor for a robot. Yeah. Hmm. Brandless kind of looks at him. Brought back a little bit. And, I don't know. I think if I uh, work more with these, I can get more of what happened. Maybe I could be of more help against them. Uh, yes, Miss Bid, I can help fill you in too. 
class reassures you. I know we haven't had time to catch up, and I have sent for the rest of um, of your command. So, and hey, I know I know we're gonna go leave and do this thing and try to you know mess up some tentacles and all, but I I I am a cleric, so I I do have some spells that can. You know, like restore and help things. We could try some of that. Maybe. I didn't realize you were a cleric. You can cast a spell with us. Well, I, yeah, I don't know. I don't know which one I could. I could do guiding bolt. I would no, hurt this, the tentacle. This spell <clears throat> and magpie opens the book. Here we will be casting this, and these are the parts that you all can say. Mm, mm, mm. I can cast well. comprehend languages to actually read it. You are handy. And then I can translate it over to everyone else in a different language. Perhaps common? Yes, this most complicated part. Perhaps leave to me. Um, just so we don't risk it. Can I... Uh, I'm going to throw a perception check. I think that's... Or is it insight? Insight would be what I need here on if they're hiding something potentially dangerous. Okay. 20. Um, the part of the spell that she's showing you does seem difficult to comprehend. It's perhaps out of uh, your normal ability to cast. Yeah, I'm not really that smart. So, you know, any help would be good. She also seems very excited by the prospect of casting this new spell. You know, I you seem very excited in uh, <laughs> I hope you've got everything correct. I would hate for someone to be hurt with the outcome of this. Uh, have you thought of what maybe what bad things could happen in the spell? Unintended results. Well, I think that you all have kind of laid those out already. If this is what they were trying to do, then they failed. But that does not mean we will fail. You say Surgug. I have heard of Surgug of the Flegula Gongumen. Mm -hmm. A powerful warrior, but... Uh, not known for his wizarding skills. So, what is the end result of the spell that we're trying to cast here? We should be able to manipulate the tentacles, and um, once we can do that, perhaps we will gain more insights while controlling them. But I imagine then we would simply... Uh, have them release the Grafa so that we can conduct uh, Master M Monet's uh, mm -hmm. experiment. All right, so we're going to go down. We're going to get face-to-face -face with these tentacles and then try to cast a, a, a spell on them to control them. Yes. Okay. Okay, I'm definitely coming then. And... Um, I can't cast any spells or anything, but here's what I'm going to do is I'm going to stay to the side and I'm going to um, start slicing into them the moment that <laughs> anything seems as if the spell is not working. Uh, you are one who has defeated them before. I would defer to you, of course. Yeah. Only and only because and 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 please, please don't. I, I do not mean this as any in any disrespectful way towards you or your capabilities. Um, I simply have seen what happens when the spell does go wrong, and I'd hate, and I, 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 I don't want to see it again. So I, I would prefer to nip that in the bud if, if that does so happen. More of a contingency plan than anything else. Yes. Well, I think that with the group of us and our prowess over the arcane, perhaps we'll have no problem. That's the goal. All right, I'll start praying, I guess. <laughs> well, um, whenever you do your praying, that is fine. Let us go down to the tentacles and get eyes on them. Let's do it. Um, All right, well. 
on on the way there, uh, Reynolds is going to kind of pull like Jules back a little bit, like behind the group, and is just going to start like whispering to him, like, "Hey, I look this." In guy. your brain, you hear, "I can't hear you," but we still have a psychic link. Oh, and Reynolds starts uh, <laughs> talking to the psychic link. Sorry, it's been I, I've been really foggy for the, the past. Uh, I don't know. A few You're good. minutes. I don't really. Um, we're we're on, we're on a private channel, so you can say whatever you want. Okay, cool. Uh, th- hey this guys. is probably gonna go. Oh, hey, what's up, Mordecai? <laughs> yeah, uh, this is probably gonna go to bad. I mean, I I'm kind of low on spells, you know. Um, I mean, he's got some good ones I could pick that would make this a little bit safer for everybody. But this person seems really intent on doing this now. Uh, yeah, I don't see this going well, but uh, you know, hey, Jules, give me that ring real quick. And he he takes Mm. the ring off your finger, yeah. And uh, he looks around, scans, and he's gonna flick it towards uh, Mordecai. And I say, Catch, okay, uh, put that on real quick. I'm just gonna make sure, you know. Keep in track because you might be a target in whatever happens next. And you said this also. What does this do? Uh, it's uh, well, it was basically the lifeline I, I handed Yoshi Ruke whenever we uh, were trying to climb up that cliff. <laughs> so it does happened. like some damage absorption or something like that. Yeah, I take the, I'll take some of the damage too. So please, I mean, don't try to get hit. So become the target is what you're saying. Okay, whatever. And he's just skits walking. <laughs> <laughs> Captain, may I uh, see the book for a moment? I want to see if I can understand any of the spell, maybe add it to my memory. Oh, I am not a captain. I am merely a wizard. Uh, Mordecai, this is your book. You hold it till we get there. Sure. Thank you. Mordecai, would you mind if I took a look at it for a moment? I, I'll give it right back when I'm done. Can I be a present? Yes, you can. You can watch. And be my guest. I'm going to cast Comprehend Languages and just like look at the spell that was shown to us that we were told we couldn't understand. Um. Yes. And also when you uh, use your insight check, you were able to look at that part of the spell and realize that it was a bit out of your comprehension. Um, but as far as reading the languages within the book, uh, this book is varied in the information it presents from different cultures. So uh, this does open up more knowledge within the book. Uh, however, a lot of it uh, seems to be um, written out in puzzles of, fo- of sorts. Um, you know, using anything, stories to uh, confer deeper meanings. Anything specifically that looks like a warning for what we're about to do? You do see the notes, um, you know, next to where this uh, spell is, you know, defined or explained. And there are notes regarding what has happened uh, to those who have tried to cast this spell. And things have not gone well for them. Uh, there's essentially uh, the two instances that um, you know were spoken of, but uh, I believe this tome was actually gained in the Shrine of Anhur in your sec <clears throat> during your second meeting with Sergug in the back room. Mm-hmm. Um, <clears throat> excuse me. So um, there are notes in here from uh, Lady Thradilla, uh, Lady Hilgem. And uh, and others, but notes about uh, what happened with the first use of this ritual um, explain how uh, you know things didn't essentially did not end well for the subject. And while I'm reading it, I'm going to use minor illusion to like project a little image on Mordecai's hand or arm somewhere where he can see it, but it's not being shared to everybody because it's his book of just a language he can understand. Okay. If it's is it uh, straight concentration, if it's I just straight translation, is there any way that I can use my 
Arcana to see if I can understand it from a straight translation point of view. As in, um, he's already translating it for me, so I only have to, like, comprehend it as opposed to translating and comprehending. Yes. In that case, um, I'm going to try to make an Arcana check based off what he wrote to see if I understand anything with uh, greater depth. That's going to be a 21. Okay. Um, also, comprehend languages specifically is not meant for decoding secret language, uh, secret messages. <clears throat> so although you do gain more insight and, you know, learn about what had happened, the, what you relate to Mordecai would, <clears throat> you know, uh, essentially be in line with what Mordecai has experienced. Okay. Which is somewhat horrifying, uh, no doubt. Um, just a normal Tuesday. <laughs> Mordecai's just like, girl, I've done it. I mean, when you have a devil's face stuck to yours, things become more normal than they probably should be. And so after you have descended uh, for several minutes, taking first the lift and then a long winding hallway, you see the guards, and again, Plas speaks, and Mr. Irving is out of jam, and the two guards step aside. Again, there's the contingent of dwarves playing cards. Um, Commander Plas uh, leads the group of you to here where they have dug out the area around the Graffa. Um, this is essentially a long trench uh, bordering uh, this mega structure and there are the black tentacles and they're wrapped around the graffa uh, perhaps there are more even now than there were when you were here earlier commander I uh, this spell seems very dangerous I may have a better solution to get rid of the tentacles you may if you want to hear me out um they're weak to fire, if I remember correctly. And couldn't we cast heat metal on the Grafa to burn them? As like a group effort to heat the whole thing up? Like a big element? I doubt it would be enough to heat it up. Yeah, that's a lot of metal. How many wizards and artificers and clerics and druids could we gather up? Well, we already have the mages' college assembled. They've been waiting all day. A couple of fireballs should do the trick. Yeah, we could just kill them. No, I'm not. Maybe uh, this solution would be temporary, and you've thought this out more than me. Maybe your solution's more permanent, but... I'm thinking of safety. I, I would rather n less people be harmed. I haven't come across too many things that can survive death by fireball. Phew. You just need a bigger fireball, obviously. Yes. Do we have like, like an explosive powder? We could talk um, to the, the artificers and find out. Yeah, I don't think we have anything. Like Magpie, that, but... forgive us for not going with your plan immediately, but I we're kind of wanting to blow this up now. I I, I kind of feel. Uh, Mordecai, since you're not going to be using the book, would you mind if if I borrowed it? Here, I trust you completely. <laughs> Rail just kind of 
<laughs> raises his eyebrows like, oh. Well, this isn't my project, so, I mean, <clears throat> if you all Never decide been to do something else that's going to be more dangerous, that's fine. I will simply study and enjoy this magnificent piece here. I've never been let down by figures of authority. Reynold oh, just kind of thinks no back to our here. trial. <laughs> just, a, just a humble wizard. And Magpie's uh, plume flattens atop her head as she uh, reads carefully over this um, rare lore. Is Magpie an Aarakocra? Perhaps. Or is she she just does like have a, a lot of bird features. Or is she just like a strange human with feathers instead of hair? She also has um, feathered <coughs> hands. So. She also has what? I'm sorry. Uh, feathered hands as well. So there is something of the Aarakocra to her. She's like a harpy? She's half Cocra. Not bad. Oh, oh, Bahamut, please. <laughs> Commander Plus. Oh, I'm sorry, go ahead. Oh, Bahamut, please. Just in, in Reynolds' head, not even out loud, just please, this is, yeah, I don't see this going well. <laughs> <laughs> if you're going to be looking at me in these next moments, please do keep in mind that I <laughs> am very scared for all of us. Commander Plaz summons the guard. A group of you, two of you stay. Give me your shield. And she draws her long sword. Well then, there are about a half a dozen dwarves and uh, Commander Plas. They're ready. I think we're ready. Let's do this. Bahamut, help us. So exactly what are we doing commander you told us we were going to help with the spell but do you want us to just focus our energy into you so you can direct it or do you want us to do something specific oh um well i believe they've changed the plan mr misbit you might be able to help them uh says uh magpie okay um so let me know what i need to do Who wishes to act, my friends? Uh, I'm going to be part of this ritual. Yeah. So, so wait, I'm, I'm sorry. I'm a little confused. I thought that we just said we're going to fireball and attack the tentacles. Did we agree to try fire? Because it was right. just an idea I threw. I didn't know. I, I, I think we were just joking about it. <laughs> I think we, we're going to try to control the tentacles. Yeah. And if they go out of our control. Then we go to fire, plan no, B for fireball. fireball. Burn everything to the ground. Okay, so why there was a conversation that we had where you guys are like, "Oh, we're gonna um, I, cast I just... fireball and attack it," and then Magpie's like, "Oh, good. Okay, well, I'm going to study this book while you guys do that." We Did can that happen? do that. It was just no. an idea we were talking. We're gaslighting about. the DM. <laughs> <laughs> what? Did it happen then? What in the? Did it? I don't Did remember. It? Are you sure? No, you it can didn't run the happen. tape back. I missed Pretty a couple sure. seconds, so we may have all agreed to do that, but I thought it was just, just an idea. And then we got I just remember the part where we found a million gold. Yeah, that's, that's... yeah. Do you remember that bit? <laughs> I don't think he does. Anyway, no, we brought a million up... gold, it was a hundred thousand platinum. Okay, wow. yeah. <laughs> Commander Plaz, who are these people you brought to me? <laughs> Commander yeah, Plaz, what is going on? <laughs> <laughs> um, so we are going to try to control the yes we're, con we're oh, going to try to control the tentacles well, sorry I didn't go back upstairs sorry magpie the whole fireball thing was just a joke we'll have that for plan B if things go unless out you want to fire like unless you and, want no it's not complicated and, and, any further <laughs> let's just, just, just do this it damn ritual less risky but uh, this seems like more fun and, and I'm sorry because I like your style I, I can never tell when they're joking or not either. So, <laughs> who's joking? Huh? We're joking. <laughs> anyway, oh. well, let's let's four <laughs> people. I think the tentacles have had lingering effects on their sanity. 
uh, very very real possibility. I'm just nah. going through a lot. Well, um, okay, let's do this. Make a triangle. Okay. On the ground here. Draw a triangle. And put the diamond in the center. Okay. Now, repeat with me the part that we practice, and <laughs> Magby begins to chant uh, the magical spell that she has shown you. Jules backs up about 20 feet immediately. <laughs> okay. <laughs> uh, Reynold is going to cast Bless on himself, uh, Mordecai, and uh, the robot man that has accompanied us. Mr. Misfit. Model Mister. 301. Mis model 301. So, you know, a D4 for saving throws is mainly what I'm doing it for. This is a ritual. Um and then whoever is taking part in casting the ritual, please make an intelligence check. Oh, God. Okay. I'm good at those. Very well. I hope you are, because we aren't. 16. Let's, let's try it out. Uh, for this, I'm going to use Devil's Own Luck. It seems important. Oh, my God. <laughs> I... Nice. I have Oof. a non-nat 20. Oh, no. <laughs> Is he going to get higher than me? Probably. Okay. Woo! Yeah. 26. Oh, wow. Okay, so we have 26 from Mordecai, a 12 from Yoshiruke, a 20 from Reynold, and a 16 from Mr. Misfit. And so, um, as you chant, you feel empowered by this spell. And the uh, tentacle begins to, or excuse me, the triangle uh, see, uh, uh, begins to be illuminated by the purple gem that is glowing vibrantly now. The tentacles begin to pull off of the graffa, and they begin to enter the triangle created by the three of you. And one tentacle begins to wrap around the diamond. And will you all please make... Um, Uh, wisdom saves mm. and uh, Mordecai, you can be at advantage. And oh, wrong one. Wait, I didn't I? It. no, I think that's right. Do I, I need to make a, a save as well, or just the ones casting? Just the casters. Thank you. I okay. got a okay. six. <laughs> All right. Uh, oh, no, Mr. Miss Pitt, you can add a d4 if you want. Same with Mordecai. Not that we'll meet it. 22. You said a d4? <laughs> yeah. I'll save it. Yeah, I don't think I need to. Is it like a one-time use, like inspiration? No, it's a. It's, hey. No, it's, it's concentration. A concentration for a minute. Oh, that's another twenty-six. Oh, twenty-three. And I got. I see you, Ben. I this see is you. Setting insanely high DCs if we have all these abilities. <laughs> I'm kidding. I'm kidding. Um. <laughs> well played. So we have a smorgasbord of uh, wisdom saves here did anybody else get over 25 uh, no i was over, over one sure over 20 i got six Ooh. <laughs> yeah i think he okay. was the only one that didn't make it uh yoshiruke <laughs> and um magpie are chanting and they're lost in this magical spell being cast um And a lot of you um, are kind of watching as the tentacle raises up. And uh, Yoshiruke, in your mind, you think that it would be best if this stone were in Magpie's skull. And you can sense uh, Magpie is working towards this end as well. And um, Mordecai you feel slightly disconnected from the ritual and you sense that something is wrong. Your mind flashes to Sergug, the tentacles impaling his skull and the tentacles uh, seem to mean to supplant the brain of Magpie here and implant the stone in its place. Will everybody please roll initiative? Just so we have an order of operations here for actions. Yeah. 
and Yoshi Ruke, you're um, kind of under the effects of uh, a powerful uh, magical presence or spell, and you're you just feel fully committed to this uh, for whatever reason. Let's go! Oh, look at these rules. Three non nat twenties, oh, no. a nat twenty for twenty five. So how are we gonna how are we gonna do this, guys? I'm getting I mean, brutally murdered again. Well, to be fair, it makes sense because we all were like kind of tuned in that something was off. Uh, Jules, we do me a favor, please, and make an insight check. Gusto. It's a one. Oh, everything's fine. It's a dirty 20. Can I get above a 12, please? <laughs> no, sorry. <laughs> Jules, <laughs> um, you see the magic being cast. You're watching carefully, ready for whatever may come of this. And you see um, kind of the tenor of Mordecai's face shift. Uh, becoming aware of the actions of these tentacles uh, who seem to be um, a present danger at this point. Uh, although it is not exactly clear, uh, you see essentially the tentacle raising into the air uh, with the purple diamond kind of coiled within its grasp. Okay. Um, so all I know right now is that something is wrong but I, I don't know exactly what's going on at the moment. Okay, so then seeing seeing Mordecai's concern and seeing this whole thing just get kind of weird, um, I'm going to... Um, I'm going to use my turn to... Um, okay, is there... Um, the, the area that we're in, like the room space that we're in is there are, is, is it like an empty space is there like stuff this in there? is kind of like a if you imagine a trench with um or a, a roughly dug cave that's kind of just being supported by uh wood planks uh, it's been recently dug okay okay um are there any sort of like uh uh little corners or like a uh stalag which which one's the one on the bottom? Slag tights, slagmites. Yes. <laughs> okay. Um, so as I moved away from from this whole thing, as the ritual began, I would have mm -hmm. sort of positioned myself near one of those. So seeing that things are going are are potentially going awry, I'm gonna like kind of squat down below that uh, and use my bonus action to hide. And then I'm okay. gonna hold my action. I'm gonna I'm gonna uh, have one of my psychic blades in hand, ready to go. And I'm watching the tentacles like a hawk. And as soon as one of them or some portion of it like makes a, uh, a move towards one of my allies, uh, then I'm going to attack from my, from my uh, ID hole. Okay. Um, I think another insight check might be in order just to kind of like uh, determine how tuned in you are as you're waiting to take this action. Sure. Um, mm, that's not great. I'm going to uh, use a psychic die with that. Ugh, still not great. Twelve. Okay. Alrighty, and so you're ready. Uh, things are. It might be taking a turn for the worse, but it's hard to understand uh, exactly what's happening because of your. You have really no yeah. knowledge of magic, so. Yeah, I don't. I don't. I don't. It's all weird stuff to me. So I've just got. I've got my psychic blade in hand and I'm ready to, uh, you know, react to whatever may happen. And next is Mordecai. Okay. Uh, I'm currently not under the, the effects of this spell current, correct? Right. Okay. In that case, my primary goal, seeing these tentacles reach out for that, gemstone is to destroy the gemstone and okay. if i can inflict some damage on this uh these tentacles at the same time so i'm going to try to fling a fireball right at the gemstone and try to uh if i can literally melt it away 
uh, with the heat and, and try to damage uh, these tentacles. How the far away attack. is the gemstone from us? Hmm. The group of you are quite close to this, uh, surrounding a basically the triangle would, you know, consume one five foot square, and the group of you are on either side of the triangle and on the along the bottom of it. Then, in that case, scratch that. <laughs> That's okay. <laughs> <laughs> Just blow us up. Just yeah, us I mean, guys, I had to do it. I'm not. I am not letting this thing kill you. I'll kill you myself. What is it? it says fireball, <laughs> so fireball. I don't care who's in the way. Yeah. It's all the same. Casualties, it's okay. Uh, in that case, I'm going to cast Banishment. Hmm. On the tentacle? Knowing that the, yes, knowing that these tentacles are summoned here, that they are not of this plane, I'm going to try to cast Banishment. And that'll be a DC 17 charisma saving throw. Oh no, Ben. It's happening again. I remember when I did this. I remember when I did this. Uh, your spell doesn't seem to have any effect. <gasps> remember last campaign when what? I also did this? <laughs> Gasp. Gasp. The uh, tentacles have case. plot armor. <laughs> <laughs> about time <laughs> uh, in that case uh, I'm going to try to scream wake up wake up and uh, that'll be the end of my turn okay should have just gone with the fireball <laughs> Reynold you're up okay and you're taking part in this ritual it, perhaps it's going to plan. Uh, the tentacles seem to be reacting. Uh, they're holding the the gemstone. Hmm. Uh, Reynold is initially suspicious of this, of this whole ritual, because it involves using some dark magical book that only Mordecai seemed to be able to conquer. Um, I don't know if it would be fair for me to ask for an inside check to see if I notice anything wrong. Um, so I might just... I'll, I'll just prepare... Uh, I'll just prepare like a, a swing of my hammer against anything that gets aggressive. Because I don't really know if it's if this is going good or not, you know. Do you continue doing your part for the ritual? Continue chanting? Uh, yeah, because I don't have any reason to, to not do it. I don't have any reason okay. to believe it's it's not going over well. Okay. And then we have Mr. Well, Nisbet. I'm oh, sorry? Mordecai did scream, wake up, wake up. So that's a little odd. <laughs> yes. Would he have heard that? Having scored above a 20? Yeah. I got like a 24. I didn't, I didn't get over the threshold or what I believe would be the threshold. That's a fair point. Um, so I don't know anything's wrong necessarily, but I'm also not kind of like charmed into trying to put a rock in somebody's skull. Does so it lend you enough pause to stop chanting the ritual or do you continue though? Cause that might, that be, might be the circumstance that changes that it's up to you. Yeah. I think, Reynolds is going to like stop chanting and look over around and be like, what? <laughs> okay. And Mr. Misbit. I'm very suspicious of the spell going on. Uh, but I'm afraid of what might happen if I quit chanting. So I read that the spell was dangerous. I guess I'm just going to be ready. I'm not going to cast any spell yet, but I'm going to be ready to cast a... Let's see what level is the spell. A third level spell, if I need to. The Agonazer... Yeah, Agonazer is Scorcher. But, uh... Not yet. I'm just keeping an eye out. If it goes towards one of my allies, like the tentacles or anything dangerous, I'm just going to kind of like laser beam it. Okay. Yoshiruke, um, 
Will you make a wisdom save for me, please? <clears throat> oh, jeez, not again. <laughs> you you still have the D4. Oh, no, I have to roll a D4. Oh, wait, no, sorry. That was that was a uh, <laughs> robot man. So it'll just be a straight D20 for the roll? Yeah. Oh, I got a 16. Oh, 16, okay. Uh, Yoshiruke, you feel the magic um, of this spell very powerful and it uh, seems to be taking effect and you uh, feel yourself kind of you know being lost to the magic but then you hear uh, the shouts of Mordecai to wake up and you kind of snap to attention and uh, it pulls you slightly out of your trance um, so you are able to hear the warning from uh, from Mordecai and see that uh, I believe Mordecai stopped casting the ritual. Is that correct? And you could see that that has happened. So uh, now it is upon you to act. They, uh, you they might would have seen compelled. me stop casting the, the ritual and they would have seen me uh, casting a different spell towards okay. the, the tentacle. Okay. Then Yoshiruke, you feel you can act on that uh, in whatever way you feel compelled to act. Um... So can I just stop casting the ritual? Yes. Okay, then I uh, guess I'll do that. And let's see. I don't think this is going to do anything, but I'm just going to like cast my thorn whip to try and hit a tentacle okay if that if that even does anything okay <laughs> 17 oh okay well it's... and your thorn whip lashes out at the tentacle the tentacle quickly crawls around uh, magpie surrounding her like a snake and the purple diamond is held high above her head. Everybody who readied an action except for Chris, please roll an insight check. Oh, here we go. I don't think this would trigger my action because Lady Magpie wasn't set in front of me when I was told who my allies were. Hmm. Huh. Well, I got a 26. Nice. Is that all I'm waiting for? Yeah, I wouldn't. I probably wouldn't have used it if something was going after her. The tentacle seems to have turned, and uh, no doubt Lady Magpie is in danger. Everybody who's ready to action can take that action, and we'll start at the top with Jules. Awesome. <clears throat> uh, am I hidden well enough? Do I have advantage? Yes. Sweet. Ooh, 17? I guess since everyone else is attacking it, I'll assist my allies. Then that does make sense. A 17 will hit. Awesome. Good sneak attack. I think I have a five spells. Ooh, nice. Ooh. All right, all right. Uh, 25 points of damage total. Not bad. Make a DC save. Uh, we're going in initiative order for this, though. Okay. Um, oh, this is my ready to action. Yes. This is agonizing scorcher. Yes, we'll resolve them uh, in initiative order. Um, as Jules uh, casts Psychic Blade, the tentacles recoil uh, from the magic uh, further yet, and they drop the purple diamond to the ground. Um, Raynal? I know what Raynaud's doing. Uh, Raynaud is going to uh, just basically try to step over the diamond. Is going to take his hammer and try to smash it to bits. Okay. Um, it's just going to be a one-handed. Okay. Uh, I'm going to use inspiration to reroll that. Okay, that's not much better. That's a 13. <laughs> and the stone uh, bounces across the ground. You're able to strike it. Hmm. 
Uh, I'm going to use my bonus action to use a War Priest to uh, attack a second time. Okay. And I'm just going to try and lay into this thing and try to deal some some hefty... Okay, I I like glance <laughs> off of it once and I'm like, ah, oh, stupid diamond, get over here. And I like hit it and it boings off into the sky. I'm like, ah! Oh. <laughs> oh, no, I'm sorry. The 13 would have hit it. Oh, okay. Yes, it's it's an item like, okay. kind of like moving slowly across the ground at this point. I still assume a seven doesn't hit though. You know? No, the 13 will hit. Okay. Oh, I rolled damage. I don't even know if it'll matter much. Okay. 11. And the diamond is smashed beneath your hammer into bits. Smaller diamonds. Stop breaking our money. <laughs> <laughs> I, 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 don't, I don't like it either, man. All right. And that's going to be uh, Reynolds' turn. Okay, and then Mr. Misbid, you would cast Agnazar Scorcher, is that right? Yeah, on whatever my allies were attacking. So as he was beating that with his hammer, it was just getting lasered at with heat. And Ridic- so you've all unleashed your magic upon the tentacles. Um, and they rescind, they pull back quickly and seem to become smaller and quickly are pulled away into the earth, into the walls of the cave. Um, and they release their hold on the Grafa. The tentacles are gone. Is Magpie alive and good? Magpie is there. <clears throat> She's looking down at the stone. What have you done? We were uh, so close. Saved you and mission accomplished. No, 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 no. I was almost... I was... Captured? Uh, no, not that. Overtaken? Yeah, yeah, it was. <laughs> it was that. Can't... Almost there? You almost met your goal? Can Reynold, like, peer into her eyes and try to see if she's, like, not a good wizard? Because there's a lot of those out there. As you peer into her her eyes, uh, it seems as though her mind is trying to catch up with everything that has just happened to her. So this thing is a good wizard. Oh, can I can I do something? Yes. Um, can I cast detect thoughts to try and (laughs) get into the mind and whatnot? Yes, you can. (laughs) Okay. And uh, she casts counter spell. (gasps) <gasps> Can I cast counter I spell? Yes! <laughs> go. Yes! Do you there it is. Me and you were about to say the same thing. There there it is. You can't <laughs> hide the plot from us, Ben. You cannot hide the truth from me. And like you see... Mordecai just um, dabs. The, um, <laughs> Good job, bro. <laughs> you see a uh, vision... <clears throat> Uh, of the tranquil Trikeshnia and uh, Magpie sits atop her tower uh, tentacles splayed out uh, towards the sky uh, creating light to shine down upon the land below her mm. yes that is what would have been if you'll excuse me Magpie rushes out uh, I'd like to try and stop her. <laughs> Can I use form up to grab her? I'm just going to wall of fire in front of her. <laughs> I'll do it. How far away is Magpie? She can't oh, be more than crap, 120 feet away, right? Magpie is right among you. Yeah, can I use form up to grab? Uh, use what now? Oh, thorn whip? Uh, yeah. Okay. Yeah, I got a 17. Uh, Friends, um, this has taken a turn. Uh, Surely you don't wish to uh, create trouble where there is none, right? I'm merely trying to leave. Uh, Commander Plaz, what is this? You said these were friends. Hmm. Yoshiruki, I never knew you to be like this. What What is the problem? Well, you see, all those years ago, you stole 
my jar of jam. <laughs> and you ruined my over. day, and I have not forgotten. It's all over groceries. Yes. Why, why would you steal this man's <laughs> jam? What kind of monster? What type of monster are you? Uh, I think it's best that you stay here for a moment. I will leave my own accord away. immediately. Um, you will do no such thing. I will not let that happen. Madam, uh, <laughs> you've acted quite suspicious. You've hi hid dangerous rituals from us, and you turned away to run pretty quickly. You sounded like you didn't get something you wanted out of this. The running pretty away exciting. thing was pretty... Yeah, pretty not great for you. I mean, you probably could have stayed, and it would have been, you know, a little bit more smoothed over. But you out. immediately ran. Innocent people don't do that. Bodyguard function has been chosen for me, and I've got software I can notice when you're being suspicious. It's been programmed. I see it. Heavy breathing, the beads of sweat, lost in thought. The tentacle worshipping tattoo. <laughs> <laughs> Hiding detail. Well, what is it? What would you know? You're just acting suspicious. Yeah. Oh. Dangerous. Am I? Well, you did. That, yeah, that right there was suspicious. <laughs> you I'm did just request gonna... to partake in the same ritual that's been done previously and has not turned out too well. Um, if, if I recall, we were all into this together. We all agreed to uh, commit to this ritual and cast it. Uh, M Commander Plaz, my patience is being tried heavily by our friends. Yeah, how is, how is Commander uh, Plaz taking this? Right Commander Plaz kind of... looks <clears throat> very concerned and nervous. She's not spoken yet. Can I get a read on who they're concerned for? Are they looking at Magpie a lot more? Are they can, looking at us? You can roll inside if um, you like. I would love to. At a 25. Nice. Um, she seems very concerned for everybody's safety here, uh, considering the parties involved. Can I uh, do something? Yes. Can I try and use my charisma to, uh, I just get, um, the commander on our side? Persuade, perhaps? What would you like to say? That Magpie here is in the wrong, and she nearly had to get, she nearly killed me. And my friend here, on multiple occasions, nonetheless. You can roll a persuasion check um, with disadvantage. <laughs> persuasion. Dang it. <laughs> um, look, Magpie is instrumental in this project, Yoshiruki. I'm surprised at you. I thought that your heart was really in this. Um, I think... I need to ask all of you to release Magpie. She has business to tend to, and she did not attack you. I was here the whole time. She's was, she made no advances. She attacked my mind. Well, listen, we we don't have proof. We all know. Magpie? what happened but we don't have proof so in this case i think that let's go with the authorities let it just be known that we were against her leaving and should something else happen down the line we would we would prefer not to be held responsible seems reasonable to me sure oh my um, well you know we're letting you know that she's dangerous if, she, if you wish to let her go, then so be it. But it shall be on you. 
Yes, well, <clears throat> I'll accept the responsibility, and Magpie, thank you so much for your patience. Very sorry, very sorry. Um, <clears throat> well, uh, I do need to see to this experiment, so, um, if you'll all excuse me, you might not want to be down here when we do turn the grapha. Yeah, that's all right. right. Uh, of course, you can join me on the streets, but uh, I'm sure you have other things to do. It kind of sounds like you just you just don't want us to be here. <laughs> you could just say you could we could you could just say to leave us alone. And we'll we'll do that. I mean, well, it's the best place to watch, so I'm sure you'll be there. All right, all right. great. Reynold is kind of like stares at a. Uh, at magpie as he begins to leave i'll let my firewall down <laughs> magpie before you leave i i have a question what, what were you it? counterspelling i saw the copper wire what what did you counterspell earlier I wasn't paying much attention to everything, so I didn't see anything that you pull out a copy wire and whisper a few uh, incantations. I'm just curious. What happened? Uh, ask your friends. Uh, a lot of you started casting magic at me uh, aggressively. Well, I'm surprised you didn't realize what was going on. Um, yes, nice meeting you all, and I do need to get ready for this, so... Uh, Goodbye. Of course. <clears throat> okay. I'd like to wait until we're like all alone together. Uh, I kind of imagine that we would all, unless anybody wants to do anything else, just kind of shuffle out kind of like awkwardly after having a bad interaction almost instantly. And uh, as soon as we kind of get together, kind of close up as, as a bunch, Mordecai is going to kind of like lower it, or Mordecai, what? No, Reynold me, <laughs> is going to lower his voice. <laughs> kind of like whisper to the other guys like, we, th that was a good thing we did, right? Like that wasn't like, like we that all were, so we, well. we were all were like there, right? I kind of yeah. felt yeah, that we're all there. Yeah. Look, I, I don't know anything. I saw spells being cast at us from her so i counter spelled i don't know exactly what happened it happened so quickly but i would say she's acting strange the way she ran away yeah i don't like it yeah did you but you but anything further than that i don't know i was focusing on the ritual and then i saw her counter spell because she was across from me but i didn't see what else happened to I'm just confused. I I was focusing on getting that gem down because uh, it it did, it seemed to be going downhill fast, at least to me. That uh, part seemed very dangerous. I don't think we ever should have attempted that ritual to begin with. Yoshiruke, what did you see? What did you experience? Well, I felt as though. Magpie was controlling the tentacles to the, to try and destroy something, but I did not get a clear view of what. It was rather foggy, but it was heading directly for somebody's face. So that's bad. You know, it doesn't need to be said, but that's that's not good. Uh, doesn't sound good. So what I, should we do? Well, I don't know about you guys, but I'm very tapped on magic. I would like a good old sleep, but I don't know if we have the time for it necessarily. I mean, uh, I can hold your flash all day. I have no need for sleep, so I can I can watch while you guys rest. That would probably be pretty hey, good. Uh, I mean, I got this nifty spell called Clairvoyance. Um... I don't know how much I need to be like close to her, like 
Magpie's room to do anything with it, but it's an option I have on the table. Uh, Given time, I could probably find something to, uh, or how do I, I don't know how to put it, how you'd understand, reinstall to help you with that. I may have the clairvoyance spell too, but I'm not sure. Hmm. You two have clairvoyance, right? Yeah. So we could we could both do each part of it. Do you know the range? Uh, the range is I I believe it's. Uh, uh yeah. God. Well, yeah. You know, I needed something worth a hundred gold pieces, which you know. That gem would be um, nice for. I I got I got one I believe. Yeah, I got a I got ten gems for a hundred gold each. And I could use the shattered wow. diamond. Uh, Randall kind of looks through his 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 book that he has like like you can see it's like handwritten notes of like things he's discovered as spells and he's like, oh, no I'll, no I can cast this thing from like a mile away actually. Uh, I just have to like know. And I, I I don't know a room, so I I can't do it. I have to be see it and see the at least the door. I've been to this place before. Uh, oh, then you can you can cast that spell all day and probably cast it inside. I don't have memory of every single building here, though I haven't been in every one of them. In the ones I've been in, it's still fuzzy because they're from the last time I was powered up. Mm. So there's I a interject. few of them, but not all of them. Yeah, yeah, Yoshi, what you got? So I I can cast invisibility. I should let you go invisible for about like up to an hour or so. So maybe that could let you get closer. Hmm. Question is, do we go with clairvoyance or do we send Jules ahead and make him invisible? <laughs> <I'll> scout. <laughs> because honestly, if we're comparing like stealthy tactics, Jules hundred way to go hundred percent. It's my jam. That's that's all him. And, and if we're trying to do like clairvoyance, well, I mean, the only one that's going to be able to do here is uh, is this robot guy, Mister Misfit. He's he's going to be like the only one that's going to be able to cast a spell effectively without her catching mm-hmm. on. And I have very few locations I know enough that I could do that with. Most of them are on the Grafa itself, but not. Magpie's room. You don't think you could? I don't know where in the city Magpie's room is. Maybe mm. I know the spot, but don't know it is Magpie's room. So you've been mm. in the room, you just don't know where it is. If I remember correctly, <laughs> um, Yoshiruke, didn't you make a, a smaller version of me? Yeah. Can you see through that? Do you have a telepathic bond, like a familiar? Um, I don't actually. Yeah, I do. Maybe you could scout out with that. I'd work. Mm, potentially. However, and so I'm sorry. As the group of you are coming uh, to your plan. There are thousands of people standing in the streets of Trikeshnia, and most places, most establishments seem to be closed uh, because the people are all outside. All of them looking at the Grafa, speaking excitedly or waiting with visible anticipation. And mages from the finest college of magic on Gira have assembled surrounding the Grafa, and they whisper excitedly to each other, some of them casting minor illusions or spells to entertain or befuddle the gathering crowd. I want to join the, the crowd if I can. <laughs> if someone make if myself I, look as inconspicuous as I can. Yoshiruke. Yeah. If you want to send your uh, homunculus to go and do some scouting to maybe try and find. Oh, what was her name? The bird lady. Magpie. Uh, magpie. I had it in my head, went to say, it just went away. Go find Magpie and all that. Maybe I could gather some information by asking civilians. Maybe some rumors they've heard. Um, do you have her- any idea of what section where her room may be located? Would I have knowledge of that, Ben? 
You've been to the tower, but only to uh, perhaps to use the study in the main hall. I know so, that it's somewhere in the tower, but other than that, nothing, right? Yes. Okay. So I'm going to uh, cast invisibility on my homunculus and just uh, send that out to uh, just try and find the room, I suppose. Wait, you're sending out your homunculus? Yeah. You know what? I'm going to send out my lucky lucky. Uh, so I'm going to summon <laughs> how much, Lucky, how much of the way who is, uh, my imp familiar. Yeah. And I'm going to have him also cast invisibility on himself. So now nice. we have two familiars. <laughs> Tag team. Except for, if I remember right, the homunculus can go anywhere in the world where the familiar has to stay a certain distance from you. Um, he has to stay a certain distance from me to be controlled by me. Uh, within 120 feet, but I can still send him out. I just don't have dark control of him. So I'm going to have him basically uh, tag team with uh, the homunculus, and should something happen to the homunculus, uh, come back and report to us. Okay. So you send your scouts out discreetly um, in search of magpie, right? Yes. What's the general idea behind this? Yep. Okay. And, and I'm um, gathering information and just like giving people magnificent paste. <laughs> <laughs> um, as you do so, um, and you've kind of uh, become part of this gathering crowd outside of the Grafa, uh, from hundreds of feet up atop the Grafa, three chimes sound, and all of the mages begin to chant in unison casting a ritual together and this is where we're going to take a break for the evening for 10 minutes uh we'll be back at about 7 53 uh pacifics uh thereabouts so grab something to eat something to drink and we'll see you right back here <laughs> I'm actually thinking back to. Oh, yeah, I'm bad news for you guys. I'm thinking back to Hillboro with the spotty and the gems in their head. I'm just afraid oh, all of your mages are going to turn into spotty. I don't know what you guys hey, are so uh, worried about. Uh, Mr. Misfit. What's up? Could you ready your. Uh... I don't, I don't know what it's called. Your laser beam? <laughs> I can answer torture? <laughs> yes. I think we we might need that pretty soon. <laughs> Did we Are leave you spell in it, uh, it, battle it, mode? It. Activate lethal mode. <laughs> a spell I will, will expire if you ready it and uh, the trigger doesn't happen within a round. So. Aww. I'm not, I'm not readying <laughs> a, a spell yet. That's a third level spell. I have bad news uh, for you guys. If we didn't take a rest after that whole ritual thing, I have no spells left. Oh, great. <laughs> so we're all He's tapped. a warlock, though. He'll be all right. He's got If we've warlock. had an hour rest in between, I have all my spells. Yeah, because we were scouting out everything. I we? picture an hour has transpired just with the plans you guys are making. Um, the kind of uh, strange situation that unfolded with Magpie, uh, the walk up. We can we can call that an hour, uh, just you know, for the sake of gameplay as well. So that's fine. In that case, so I'm in rest. full health and I have all my spells back. So uh, make sure to you know use your hit dice if you want. Um, because of this short rest, it's customary to pretty much heal up all the way. <clears throat> um, and then make sure that you also have your uh, everybody has the their spells uh, spell slots accurately. Uh, kind of accounted for please yeah, so we are still in the same the day you know where we met or no 
There was an overnight. You lied to me, Ben. After the Giants. Yeah, we slept. You you slept after oh, the Giants. They slept. Oh, my apologies. Okay. So I do have stuff, is what you're telling good, me. Good, good, good. I was about to say this is the same you day as the Griffins, stuff. but no, no, no. Okay, okay so that changes a lot for TV. me. Thank you. <laughs> uh, my apologies. I used the scrap from the wreckage to make myself an uncommon half plate. Uh, could I ask something? Yes. Where are the nearest giants? North. Uh, on the northern frontier. Is it possible to lead them to the Grapha? <laughs> I don't understand gonna... you all. Everybody's very We're concerned. just destroying the city now. We can't assault the Grapha. We're scared. We can't, Lord yes, but it. the giants we can. So we are going to the destroy giant the city are, before the tentacles do. My friends, when we just left off, I'm going to just uh, repeat. Uh, from hundred, hundreds of feet up atop the graph, a three chimes sound. And all of the mages begin to chant in unison, casting a ritual together. Uh, it sounds like the levitate spell uh, or has similarities to it for those of you who are magically inclined. And uh, as they do so, you see three huge Eidolons. These are... Uh, humanoid kind of like giant you were just asking about giants now these would be the nearest thing to a friendly giant i imagine um made of stone and they pull at a tremendous chain there are three of these huge creatures pulling at a tremendous chain uh that seems to be attached to the inside of the graffa the ground quakes below your feet before you the mega block shifts turning very slightly as it trembles then there's a groan as it drops rapidly, the entire structure falling as if sliding down a chute hundreds of feet. Dust rises like a wave and clouds the air. We all please make constitution saving throws as dirt slams into your face. Uh, the air is full of dust on the streets. And after you do that, um, please oh. roll initiative. Oh. Oh my god. Oh, Everyone's blinded. Boy. I have proficiency <laughs> in constitution as well. So that's a 17 constitution? Gotta... Yeah, my con save was... I, I didn't save. I did. Okay. Got a 6 and I got a, a, I got a 5. <laughs> okay. I also got a 5. Um, below 15 will fail <clears throat> and essentially uh, oh. you're having trouble catching your breath uh, gaining your strength uh, you'll suffer for, uh, from one level of exhaustion oh, I don't breathe it, it, it affects your gears right? uh, okay. or you can imagine a way for yourself that it would affect you um, it just covers up the lenses I can't see anything <laughs> And you I can repeat this uh, throw at the end of each of your turns. So if you are affected by this, you can make that saving throw at the end of uh, your turn to get rid of the effects, okay? Okay. Mm -hmm. All right. Now. <clears throat> but we just got a level of exhaustion from it. That's that's all, right? Yes. Um, okay. Where do you mark exhaustion on here? Uh, you just keep track of it mentally. Okay. That just puts it at a uh, disadvantage, right? On ability checks. Ability checks at disadvantage, yeah. And will you all please drag your tokens to the very bottom left of the black map that you can see on your screen? This black square. You can see that it's slightly a slightly different shade from the background. And that's good enough. And after you place them, I'll, I'll place your tokens. Am I there? Am I there? I can't uh, tell. I don't see you there. How do I how do I do it again? Do uh, I just drag it over? Yes. Um Mitch, can there you see go. your character? I can. <clears throat> can um Joel, um did you drag your token out yet? I'm trying, but it's this is a giving me like a crossed out icon 
Like it won't let me drop it anywhere. Okay. Um, <clears throat> it just has a circle that's crossed out around it. So can you see uh, the other players on the map? I can. Okay, so it won't let you drop there. No. Oh, I don't know why. It almost seems like uh, like I'm not allowed to to drop it on the map. Put it on the tiles, specifically. It won't let me ma uh, drop it anywhere. Um, I've dropped it for you, but you probably can't control it the same. No. Yeah. It, <clears throat> excuse me. Let's see. You selected token. Save changes. Uh, can you try to move that token? Give me one second. Yeah, it won't let me select it. Okay. Um, just let me know when, if, if and when you'd like to move. Um, so I'm actually going to place you guys uh, kind of in the streets here. Um, maybe in the, the park because you would have tried to step to the side for some of your conversation and your, uh, your magic. I oh, imagine. it finally allowed me. Oh, there we go. Perfect. Um, and you see Commander Plas here, actually, uh, on the other side of the park. Um, you'll see, like, uh, Commander Plas gathered with three guards. Um, and they're keeping the people back, or were, excuse me. I'm just describing what's on the map uh, at this point. Uh, they're kind of keeping the people back from uh, where the Grafa was. But now, of course, uh, the situation has changed, and quite drastically so. Um, <clears throat> after... Uh, the Grafa has fallen and the dust has risen. Uh, the dust begins to settle and these hundreds, maybe thousands of people gathered look around with confusion, uh, not knowing whether to cheer or scream. Is this what was supposed to happen? Um, and then things begin to crawl out of the ground surrounding the Grafa. Spiders. Countless spiders. Swarms of them moving like a black sheet, unfurling upon the ground. There are large ones among them, as big as wolves. And now the people in the street know to scream. Well, we need to protect the people, everyone. Uh, should we help the guards, or do you want to stay between what's happening in the crowd of people? What should we do? Uh, they can die for all I care. Oh, wow, wow. <laughs> well, this... I was programmed with a function to protect this place. It's sacred, and a lot of these people probably think the Grafa is a very sacred thing as well. It's probably a really troubling time for them. We should help. I vote for helping. Okay, yeah. Look, guys, I know... We're here for money, and I know this place looks like it's got a lot of it, so. We're here for money? All right, all right. I thought that's what you were here for. <laughs> I don't know. I don't know anymore. <laughs> Why then, am I here? <laughs> as you decide whether to fight or flee, a terror crawls out of the pits. Can't it has the bulbous body of a giant black widow, but the upper torso of an elf. There are ten more Wait, of these abominations know. climb out of the depths, scaling the walls of the Grafa or striding quickly to the tops of buildings. Uh, and that's where we will actually um, enter combat here. And these creatures oh, sing out, their voices shrill and terrible. Ah, uh, yes. We've caused this. <laughs> and where, where, where are they at on, the, on this map? Yeah, I'm sorry. I need to give you guys a little bit better um, field of vision for this, I think. Well, I don't think we can stop all of these creatures from coming out. And I don't know. I guess we just try to help evacuate, right? It seems to be the way to go is, is help evacuate these people and get them out of here because this is a lot of spiders coming towards us. Well, yeah, I mean, 
start working on getting the people out of here and 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 start picking at some of these Sorry, just getting these pulled out. <clears throat> um, and okay. for initiative. <clears throat> uh, 23 from Jules at the top. Then 17. That was a seven for me. Oh, are we rolling initiative? Yes, please. Yes. You already rolled. You had a, you had oh. a seven. Okay. And I had a 14. And what about Mr. Misbit? I got a 10. Okay. Again, terror is stricken the people. They're uh, looking about bewildered. Uh, Jules, you can act first. You see these giant, uh, grotesque uh, abominations of spider uh, drow amalgamations. Yeah. Okay. Um... <clears throat> All right, so we want to try to get get everybody out of here. So I'm going to 5, 10, 15, 20, 25, 30. I'll run up to up here where where the the soldiers are kind of trying to hold a line, and I'm gonna see all these spiders with their spindly little spider legs run out, and I'm just gonna try to slow things down. I'm gonna reach in my bag, I'm gonna pull out my pack of ball bearings, and I'm gonna dump them out. Like right up in front of the guards in that okay. area. Um, <clears throat> I got a full pouch of a thousand of them. Well, I threw a handful of them at a at a at a, at a, a dog the other day, or, or a horse. What? <laughs> what are the other? <laughs> Wait, what when, you, when we you, were, okay, when, I'm not gonna ask. <laughs> no, no. What, are you, what are you? When we were when we were dealing with the when I pulled the off of the the thing, I, I sent them. I sent it after the dog. Yeah, just to spook them. Okay. <laughs> All right. Sure. Sure. You okay. were there. You were there. I guess I was. Anyway, aside from that handful, I've got the full bag. So I'm just going to dump those out just to put like some difficult terrain. Um, you know, just think of the little spindly spider legs won't do very well trying to sk skitter across the ball bearings. Gotcha. To kind gotcha. of slow the slow them down and make some make some space for everybody. Very good. Very and good. And then um But I'm going to dump those out and then I'll just like turn around and look and and any civilians that i see that are just staring i'm gonna lock eyes with them and i'm just gonna go run okay and that's and that's my turn yoshiruki you're up um bye bye ball bearings I'm honestly just going to stand behind Mordecai <laughs> and just start. I'm just going to take out my box of rations and just start eating. <laughs> Yoshiruke, overcome with terror, turns to food. <laughs> Smart man. Familiar. Familiar. <laughs> Reynold, you're up. Reynold is, is going to run up. Uh, with his short, stubby legs. 5, 10, 15, 20, 25. He's going to sit here behind these soldiers and is going to cast on himself at third level spiritual guardians. Uh, description. So, uh, centered in a 15 foot radius around me, uh, creatures that will move into the speed for the move into the space for the first time or start their turn there, must make a wisdom save, they take damage, fail, they take less damage. 
And it's also difficult terrain, or it's, uh, it slows their movement a bit, I believe, also. Uh, yeah, movement is halved in this area. So that will be my action. I can't really do anything else as a bonus action. So that will be my turn. And uh, yeah, Reynold just sits there and puts up his shield and a bunch of uh, swinging hooks just appear out of the air and start going around like helicopter blades. That'll be my turn. Mr. Mizbid, you're up. You're muted, Mitch. He's muted. His voice box is... Sorry working. about that. I um, move up here behind the guards like everyone else has been doing and go measure this to see if I can do it. Alright, across that 40-foot area, I'm going to cast Wall of Fire. Just to have a deterrent away from the civilians. And where do you cast this? Can you pinpoint... Uh, can you ping each end of the wall? So right here, oh, it didn't ping, sorry. Right here, and right here, I believe it's 45 feet, or 40 feet. And it can be 60 feet long. Um, okay. Alrighty, the wall of fire erupts in front of the guards. And it kind of actually snaps them out of their uh, reverie here of what's taking place. And uh, they draw their swords, ready for action. That'll end my turn. Okay. Just Commander. Save my ball bearings. <laughs> Just save my spirit guardians. I imagine the ball bearings are uh, covering an area wider and uh, more forward as well than the uh, yeah. firewall for your benefit. But. <laughs> Commander, uh, it's only a foot thick. Just so you guys know, just layer these defenses too. Wouldn't I also be able to save from the exhaustion? Oh, please do. Oh yeah, I didn't do that either. So okay. yeah. if you're turned past and you were suffering from that, please make your save now. A constitution. Yes. <laughs> oh, and while and while we were talking, I, I double checked it because I realized I haven't really used them before. Um, it's not difficult terrain with the ball bearings. It's actually it's not they're not great. It's a DC ten deck save or you fall prone. Uh, okay, very good. I got a nine, so I did not pass. Okay, what was it? it was a con save, right? Yes, thirteen. Hey, dirty twenty. Uh, I got twenty two. Is that? Is that deck save like once per turn or like every That'll time? be at the end of your turn. Every you can you uh, retry the save for the constitution save if you failed it the first time. No, the, the deck save for the, for oh, the ball for bearings. The ball oh, bearings. Sorry. Is that every five feet of movement or is that like once a turn? I think it's, I think it's just once around. Like once uh, a creature moving across the covered area must succeed on a DC 10 deck save. So it's just as they're moving through the area. Um, or they can move through the area at half speed and not make the save. So okay. um, from a mechanical perspective, uh, in, as far as the bigger picture goes for this combat, we're looking at, um, you know, uh, combatants. And then we're also looking at, as you guys have assumed for yourself, the responsibility or the task of, uh, you know, helping these people escape in whatever manner. So I have a tally going also for measures that you're taking to protect them. So as far as the ball bearings go, um, I'll probably kind of adjudicate them uh, in that direction uh, as far as this encounter goes. Okay, I gotcha. I have just a quick question about my spells. Sure. On the spell description of Wall of Fire, it says the spell save DC is 15 in chat. And then above it, it says the DC is 16. And on my character sheet, it says the spell save DC is 17. Oh my goodness. <laughs> That's so, really confusing. Which one do we go with? Because my intelligence is. Let's go with the 20. one that comes up with your uh, comes up with the roll when you roll the. <clears throat> excuse me, roll the uh, spell. Okay. So whatever comes up in the uh, the roll log. And the first one is sixteen. Oh, Please ignore my last casting. I clicked that by accident. 
No worries. Commander Plass looks as you join uh, her uh, join her side, and says, it's good to see you now. I think she raises an eyebrow before fully engaging her attention uh, upon the driders. And uh, <laughs> oh, we're gonna get you, <laughs> Mordecai. It is your turn. Okay. Uh, seeing the situation, uh, I think that my best course of action is to have my skeleton Bucky summoned and <laughs> summoned and, and doing some damage to these uh, these creatures while I try to escort some people to safety. So he's going to basically be a movable turret. I'm going to summon my, my skeleton friend Bucky with my action. And your... Bucky's placed. You should have uh, control of Bucky. Is the homunculus servant with us? I think we sent them off, right? Right. Okay. Sorry if that's not the same place as your wall of fire was. I accidentally deleted it. Um, is that where you would like Bucky? Uh, give me one second. Everything is a little confusing. Yeah, a lot. Um, I can't see him. Everybody have so many wall spells. Ah, see it. Yes, that is perfectly fine. More wall spells. Okay. The heat from the and fire. Uh, it's, uh, very comforting for Bucky. <laughs> this is a cold existence. Mm, warming these bones. <laughs> he has bones warm. Don't uh, mind him. Don't mind the skeleton. It's fine. And he's gonna he's gonna attack uh, the nearest uh, spider creature. Okay. Please so do. that's going to be uh, two attacks with my uh, attack bonus, which is currently nine. Is it like a bow that you're shooting at them? Oh, sorry. It's currently plus eight. Oh, no, because I have a sun. It's plus nine. Sorry. It's like energy, I believe. Uh, it's necrotic bolts. I was wondering if going through the firewall would have any effect on him. Is why I was asking. A twenty-seven will hit. Awesome. So that'll be second. That'll be two D four plus seven. Uh, so 11 necrotic damage. Okay. And uh, I'm going to try to use my movement if I can to try to guide people out of this area away from these monsters and try to hide them behind us. Okay. So we're holding the line. And when the skeleton appears, the guard is just jumps for a moment <clears throat> and then is it's relieved okay, and yeah lowers his sword uh <laughs> any help is good help behest. right now <laughs> uh and especially as the skeleton loses its magic uh will that be all for your turn uh that's gonna be my turn yes uh, okay yeah. and this uh d um large monstrosity's head whips around and uh this creature is wielding a sword um, and it strides forward. Oh no! Well, they can climb, <laughs> we forgot guys. there's spiders. <laughs> Quickly scaling the roof, uh, uh. crouching down on its eight limbs, <clears throat> disappearing from the sight of the people. It's hidden on the roof. How tall is your fire wall? It's 20 feet tall. Yes, this drider scaled the wall in front of the wall of fire uh, to make its way up. Excuse me for the uh, reveal of the name of the monster. Um, <clears throat> and another of these creatures 
strides forward, looking at the fire, trying to gauge what its next uh, maneuver will be. Um, and, <clears throat> excuse me, it stops uh, maybe some 10 feet away uh, from the nearest uh, small group of guards and uh, unslings a longbow uh, made from tremendous uh, black wood and takes aim at jewels. Yes. So there is visual through this wall of fire. Apparently. <laughs> it doesn't yeah, say that, that it hides anything. Yeah. Uh, the wall is opaque. And that and lasts for the duration. Oh. So I do know. <clears throat> sorry. It would know where I you are, know. but it'll it will have disadvantage then. Well, even with disadvantage that still hits. So Okay. And it <clears throat> in rapid fire. Almost as though it had uh, many arms. It fires again at you twice. Um, a 17 and then a 21. Oh, I'm sorry, we're at dis uh, disadvantage. I'm sorry. I'm trying to play in my own okay, favor. So it's, a 10 I'm and a 7. So 10 and a 7. Can. Those will both miss, but the first one okay, does still hit. Mind. Oops. Didn't mean to post that. Oh, wow. It's rolling. Uh, oh. I'm sorry. I'm trying to roll from my my mistake um 16 damage from the first arrow uh 10 piercing six poison so knowing that this might make things worse for us uh i did have wall of fire previously and i do know that it affects objects i don't know if that would affect the the arrows passing through them um, I think they go quickly enough um, that they would not ignite and cause extra damage, if that's what your concern okay. is. And also, would the floor catch on fire or is it like rock? This is like uh, paved ground and uh, displaced rock is the darker color gray. So, um, <clears throat> And uh, safely enough, the buildings do seem to be made of brick. So, you know, if you hold the fire there long enough... It's going to cause damage for sure, um, but however many instances it's been there, is it's probably okay at this point. Uh, definitely something to keep in mind. Um, and another of these creatures strides forward, eyeing you curiously, and you hear a shrill voice scream, SILENT! And then everything is quiet, and there's no more sound. And even as you try to catch your own voice, you cannot hear it. Do I um, see who is saying that? Yes, it is the uh, drider who is kind of uh, strode forward regarding the group of you. Mm, actually, I'm sorry, the firewall blocks line of sight. Um, do I need line of sight to center my spell? Ah, semantics. Lovely, tricky, tricky. beautiful semantics. Because if... if The point I choose within range, so um, it does not need to be able to see it. Uh, it knows that it knows that point is there because it has previously seen it. So you cannot see the the caster. I will draw. Um, Firewall is not doing us any services. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> that's not true. It saved me from three from two out of three shots. I this is true. Yes. Oh no. Give or take there. Sorry if I I'm sick of renavigating the size of the circle. Um and as the driders strive forward, so too does the wall of spiders um seeking to consume the people. But uh surely enough the wall of fire springs before them and like popcorn they begin snapping. Uh hundreds of spiders killed by the fire and as the uh ball bearings also roll forth uh it catches a large cluster of them that are immediately taken to the ground their small spindly legs just caught up and tied up and other of yeah. these large sword wielding um 
just abomination stride forward to where guards are trying to assert themselves. Uh, the people are uh, finally gathering themselves and beginning to flee. And then we'll be at the top with Jules. Okay. Um, how tall are these walls? This is about a 15 foot tall wall on that building next to you. Okay. Because one, one of the spiders climbed up. Well, I wouldn't, I wouldn't have seen that. I wouldn't have seen that. Never mind. Um, I think you, uh, from your perspective, you would have seen it crest the top of the building on the okay. like far right side of the wall of fire. And then you would see it hunker down, hiding itself. Okay. Um, is, is this, is this wall scalable? Can I potentially climb up it? Or is there anything that I could like, like a conveniently stacked trash can on the side of the wall or anything? Yeah, this is a, this <clears throat> building has ornate pillars, um, and such that you might be able to make use of in scaling the wall. Okay. Okay. So, um, I'm going to do that then I'm going to, uh, move, uh, through my buddies here over to here and, and, and climb up the wall. Um, and what I'd like to do because what's up? Um, you'll need to make an athletics check, uh, to move it at half speed up the wall. Okay. Athletics. Yes, please. Oh, I, oh wait, no, no, I lost the exhaustion. I broke that. Okay. Oof. Um, hang on, I'll add a psychic die to that. Nice. Okay, uh, 17. Ah, you can uh, nimbly climb up. Absolutely. Okay. <clears throat> okay, so um, what I want to do is I'm, I'm going to climb up to right before I can uh, like crest the edge and kind of try to, to, to peek over and see if I see the, the um, uh, spider lady or spider person. Yes, you do. <clears throat> there it is. Okay. Okay. Um, and I want to try to, before I actually finish my movement and crest over the wall, um, just kind of pop up and, and, and throw a dagger at, at them. Try to try to catch them off guard a little bit. Try to, trying to get my advantage on that okay you will have advantage okay cool gotta get that sneak attack okay 28 that should do it not bad not bad uh it's gonna be 21 points of damage total okay with sneak attack and then um Yeah, because we gotta get these people out of here. So, um, yeah, I'll go ahead and hop, I'll, I'll go ahead and pull myself back up on the wall to finish my movement, um, and just kind of square up. And I'm gonna. It's not gonna do any good because I'm in a silence bubble. But I'm gonna I'm gonna turn around and I'm gonna yell at the crowd to run again. But it's just. <laughs> no, like, very good. Very good. <laughs> And uh, then is Yoshiruke. So there you I are can't still. see past the firewall, right? Right, right. Did I see the spider on uh, top? Yes, I imagine you all did. Am I inside the bubble or out the silent bubble? You are inside of it. You are affected by it. <sighs> but I can't cast any spells that require verbal stuff that's correct mm, okay let's see I'm going to I guess just toss my dagger wait let's see wait should I do that uh, let me see Yeah, I'll just I'll just toss my dagger through okay, the you, wall of fire. You toss it through the wall of fire, trying to strike one of the uh, creatures on the other side. Yeah. 
All right. Uh, it's a long dagger throw, my friend. Okay. You see it go through the wall of fire, sailing over the troops uh, in front of you. <clears throat> it disappears. You can roll damage in case it hit. Reynolds sees the dagger fly and just like turns around and gives a thumbs up to <laughs> Yoshi. And will that be all from Yoshi Ruke? Um, I think I'm still at a disadvantage, am I? For the I exhaustion? Still... Yeah. Did you fail the second save? Um, um I got a that? 13 last time. Well, that will succeed on the <clears throat> the follow up saves. You need to beat okay. a ten, so you're um, you do not suffer from exhaustion. Then I'm just gonna sit down and just hammer a python to the ground. In the uh, in the grass where you are now. Yep. Okay. And that's it. After Yoshiruke, Reynold. If I were to move to this spot, uh, would I suffer any damage or ill effects from the wall of fire? Oh, that's so close. That's <laughs> why I'm asking. It does touch that square and... Um, Is, isn't wall of fire the one where you can you pick which side of the wall, like one side doesn't do anything? And the other side does ice. damage. Uh, no, it just does damage if you touch it. You gotta make a dexterity saving throw. Oh, yeah, okay. you're thinking is wall of ice, I believe. I think I'd oh, be okay. able to just drop okay. concentration when you are next to it. I don't think that takes an action, would it? Mm. No, I... <sighs> one one side of the wall, when selected by you when you cast a spell, deals five d eight fire damage to each creature. Blah 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 blah. The other side of the wall deals no damage. Oh, I'm okay. sorry. I spoke out of I turn. Should have, I should Thank have you, finished Chris. reading the spell. So yeah, I'll make it the side that's towards the spider tars. You put it and towards it. us and you just trap us in here. Yeah. So then in that case, that's you the can't move there without fighting. any ill effects of the fire. Okay. All right. <laughs> so I used 20 feet of movement uh, to get outside the silence range. And then using a third level spell, I'm going to cast the spell magic on the silence. Um, let's see. I choose one creature, object, or magical effect. I believe that satisfies. Uh, any spell third level or lower ends. Uh, each level above fourth and above, I have to roll for it. Um Okay, and you're, are you casting that on? On the silence. Okay. And the spell ends. Okay. And you hear the commotion from the people in the guard within there uh, as they find their voices. Get the hell out of here! <laughs> and you will hear above you as it drops. And again, I'll do... Oh, oh. <laughs> you're just yelling to yell. Um, also, uh, a little bit of shenanigans... Uh, well, no, that, I don't think that would work. Uh, my thing is, my range is 15 feet, and I believe the wall is 15 feet up, so I was going to ask if the spider got in the range, but it wouldn't. Um, so, with that being said, I'm just going to go ahead and uh, move. Uh, no, I'll just stick where I'm at. Okay. And call it, call it good there. Okay, now we have Mr. Misbit. Can I see the spider that climbed up on the roof? Spider uh, is still crouching down, not visible from the ground. Okay. That's about what I need to know. Um, I don't know what I should do. There's so many options. So little time. I guess I should probably go where I can see them, but I don't want to be in the front. So I'm just going to hold my action with a, oh wait, no, I can't do this. All right. I'll false life on myself at fourth level. Hmm. 
is 1d4 plus 4 temporary. And then it goes up by 5 hit points for so an extra 15. Higher levels. Okay. Will that be all? Yeah. Thank you. So I'll take 22 temporary hit points. And uh, Plast steals herself. There, the roof. Quick, the people. And she uh, commands the guard to uh, move amongst the people who are near the building. And Mordecai, you're up. Okay. Um, I'm, I'm going to go ahead and Eldritch Blast this turn. Okay. Got to conserve my strength for when we need it. So that's going to be two Aldrich Blast attacks. And sorry, if you're firing through the fire, then it will be a disadvantage. Okay. That can be your first no. if you if you like. Okay. And a so 19 will hit. I will roll the next one at disadvantage. Okay. One second. Ten misses. The nineteen does hit, though. Ouch. Okay. So it's still pretty be... crazy that he gets a ten with a one. Nice, full damage. Thanks. And then uh, I'm gonna have uh, my best buddy also best, attack. Best buddy Bucky. Okay. Yeah. And his See attacks, you, you said, are also a disadvantage. <clears throat> yes. Okay. Good save, Mister Misfit. Noted. So that'll be an 18 on the first attack. We'll miss. Okay. So that'll be a miss too. Okay. Uh, uh, and he's all also Monica. sorry that uh that'll also push him back ten feet. Oh, thank with, you. Uh, after trust, that'll be the end of my turn. Okay. Um, goodness. <clears throat> The uh, you hear the casting of the same spell, and again, uh, silence encompasses you. I'm going to draw a new circle. My circle is a little bit off. Sorry about that. Um, How far is he from me? Um, 60 feet. I'm gonna go ahead and counter spell. Do you need to see the spellcaster? I do. The wall of fire is blocking vision still. Okay. In that case, I can't. I'm sorry. Drawing circles is not super easy. At least not for me on this. Um, am I doing that right? This would be one. No. There. Okay. The yellow circle is the current um, <clears throat> sphere of silence. Sorry about that. Will that be all from Mordecai? Or Yeah, that's, that's all I can do. That was your attempted counter spell. My apologies. Yeah. Um, <clears throat> and you see uh, from where it had disappeared upon the roof, um, the spider reveals itself, uh, this creature, whatever it is, as it strides forward. Jules, it sees you in the corner of your eye, or its eye, rather. Um <laughs> Uh, I can talk, I promise. Of your eye. I, <laughs> I know things. Um, and Yeah, I mean, I, I, I climbed back up there at the end of my turn, so it, it should see me. I'm, I wasn't oh really God. very hidden. Sure, I mean, after you made the after the attack was successful, it's like, yeah. you know, trying to yeah, discover they know, what they know what I'm there now. 
Um, and it quickly wields its sword, um, the sword flashing three times. Okay, that's going to hit. That's going to hit. Uh, take 10 damage first, and then 9. Okay, I'll and take that. The, sur- the third sword flashes, um, but a 7 will miss. Yep. And okay. now this this creature is visible uh, from the streets as it's lifting to try to gain <clears throat> uh, the right perspective, the right vantage point to strike from. And... Oh, um, I'm sorry. Can I use my reaction and um, and uncanny dodge one of those attacks? Yes. Just just give me half damage. Take half damage on it. Okay. I always forget about that. All right. So I'll take. So it'll be nine and five. Okay. Instead, then. Sounds good. And on the other side okay. of the wall of fire, you hear the screams of the guard. Uh, and screams of pain as they cry out uh, not far from you not the ones you're working with uh, who are looking up to the roof trying to get a shot on that drider uh, but further up the street uh, and you suspect the worst and um, next is Jules oh it's my turn now okay it oh, is. that's right, because that was just a, yeah, that was me getting hit. And there's a current uh, sphere of silence, which, <clears throat> silence, which is uh, denoted by the yellow circle. Right. Right, okay. Um, do I play smart, or do I go for broke? If I run away from this thing right now, there's nothing stopping it from going after all these people. Stupid characters with consciences. Um, <laughs> Freaking heroes. I'm gonna, uh, I'm gonna take a steady aim shot. <laughs> oh, it's a bad idea. Ooh. Okay. I'm gonna do it. I like oh, it. I like it. it. I'm just gonna, I'm just gonna square up. I'm gonna pull out the blade and I'm gonna try to come up and get like, like in between like the 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 the, the where it goes from spider to person. Like in that scene, oh, just sort of try to yeah. hit a, hit the good organs in there. Okay. Um, so here's my advantage roll. Yes! <gasps> what? So does he kill it then? Is that is that what <laughs> happened? Mean, that just means it just dies. I think I, I just won I mean, D&D. Is you what you win, there. my friend. <laughs> Let's uh, crit. Double nat crit. 20s. Double nat 20s on that. Yes, hey, they're you real. could have given Thank me one much. of those. Oof. <laughs> look at all these. Look at all those dice. Oof. Oh, my God. Okay, so that is 9 and 14. So, uh, or I mean, not 24. So that's 33 points of damage total. Nice. Oof. <laughs> And this creature seems surprised as you strike at it with uh, such ferocity. And just to confuse them, because it's a psychic blade, leaves no wound and vanishes as soon as I do it. I'm gonna na- take the shot, and then it, as it like recoils at at the impact and and looks down, I'm just gonna pat it right on the same spot where I stabbed. And that's, I mean, it, worth it. If I die next round, that'll be fine. I'll go if that's if that's if that's Jules' last roll, I'll take it. Creature looks down, <laughs> fuming, feeling its wound. <clears throat> and after Jules is Yoshiruke. You're outside of the sphere okay. of silence now. Um, I'm sorry, my my first one was too big. I'm sorry, guys. <laughs> I think okay. it's the right size now. Yes. Um, okay. So that's where everybody is. Okay. Um. Um. Are the are the uh, creatures like? Will they be considered like undead? Uh, not in this case. Hmm. My homunculus is out there searching. 
outside the sphere of silence so I can speak. Mm. How's everybody's health doing? You see on the roof uh, where the large spider monstrosity is engaged with Jules. The Jules has taken uh, a, a more than one strike from this creature. Jules is a little a little worse than 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 half his uh, his best. Um, I guess am I able to cast cure wound on him? Yes. Oh, I'm sorry. Uh, hey. Cure Wounds is Touch Delivered. Aww. I get that confused with um, Healing Word. Oh, Healing Word, yeah. I, I was getting it. Up. It's a word. But... All right, let's see. What else can I do then? Oh, yeah. What, <laughs> is my robe, what does my robe have? I use up the mast. Sorry if you can hear my dogs. They're going crazy about something. I'm like, <laughs> no, you're good. <laughs> I took Dustin to the vet today. He's like our puppy that's... Oh, I always get their ages wrong. My wife might hear, so he's the, the age that I know completely. It. Don't mess it up. <laughs> okay, uh, but it's like so, his second um, vet visit, so we got some well, some shots and whatnot. They're pretty good, though. I'm gonna take out one of my potions of healing. Okay. Can I just toss it to him? If you're really good at throwing things, <laughs> it'll get there. If you're an athlete. Hmm. <laughs> <laughs> Um, uh, it's, actually, I don't, it's, don't, it's, it's probably don't, bad. Don't stretch stuff out of me. I'll, I'll be fine. Okay. Get these people out of here. Because not only would you have to make a good throw, Jules would have to catch it. He's kind of hanging and precariously he, off the side of a building. So. And he's kind of not difficult. paying attention to much else other than what's going on right in front of him right now. <laughs> Fair enough. Um... Can I take off the patch for my robe of useful items? I should still have a patch, say spell scroll. What so spell I'm scroll gonna, is it? It's going to contain a third level spell, Beacon of Hope. Okay. And, uh,. I'm just going to cast it on the party. So I believe it's here. So everybody looks up, Beacon of Hope. <laughs> I'm looking for it. Any number of creatures within range. And the range is 30 feet. I am not familiar with using the robe at all. Well, if it's 30 feet from you... You have to be a cleric to cast Beacon of Hope, though, right? But even though, even from a scroll? scroll though. Yeah. Hmm. Well, if you if if the spell if the spell isn't on your spell list, then you can't read the scroll. Aw, oh, man. Yeah, I, could, I could use that. Almost useless for wizards. Can, I just, can I just hand it to him, then? <laughs> a scroll won't break if you toss it, by the way. I'm can the I only one it? that could use it. <laughs> can I give it to him then? You can. He might have other things in, in mind for his turn, though. So that might, you know, well, not come to I'm fruition. I'm going to give it to him so anyways. Speak. Okay. That's fine. And uh, that'll be my turn. Okay. After Yoshiruke is Reynold. Okay. So. The scroll uh, comes flying down the street. As in the form of a paper uh, dragon. Air. Ah, I, Bahamut, I get it. Um, uh, can I attempt to climb up this roof? I'm not as good as Jules when it comes to doing... You can make uh, an athletics check to climb. You can I certainly will, try. I, uh, honestly, at this point, it's kind of looking like my best option right now. Because I don't have much else I can really do that would be effective. So I'm just going to attempt to like a like a dwarven man can 
climb up this side of this wall. I got a nine. I don't think I'd do it. A nine doesn't do it, my friend. You slip when you're about eight feet up and just land safely on the ground. <laughs> no. Oh. Well. You good, I, Red? Uh, are you good? Nope. <laughs> All right. Uh, am I able to see the uh, spider on the roof from where I'm at? I'm right up against the wall, so I don't know if I am. You can see it as it comes in and out of combat with jewels. Yes. Hmm. Okay. So what I want to do then, uh, so I at least can you know get something on the board here, is cast Spiritual Weapon. Okay. And plant it right next to him. Uh, 14 as it comes into life to hit this spider. That's one of my second spell slots gone. Yeah, I put it right next to the uh, spider jewels is fighting. Just try to help them. I don't know. Very good. So 14 hit. Uh, miss. Yeah, I figured. Um, but it's there now. You know. Okay. Pretty cool. Uh, and uh, as part as did that use my movement at all trying to climb up? I believe it does. It, you know. Yes. Okay, I'll just stand where stay where I'm at then. That'll be me. Okay. Um, Mr. Misvid, you're up. I'm going to move 30 feet to be on the other side of my firewall. What exactly is the difference between these three spider centaur things that you can that I can, can you see? go through the firewall? It'll hurt. I thought uh, if I went through on one side, it wouldn't hurt me. And it was only if, you, if I went through on. As everybody looks up firewall, man, I don't know. <laughs> I feel like you come in, come out on the hot side. I think it's 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 about. Um, you can't go through the wall. You can go up to a the creature wall. takes the same damage when it enters the wall for the first time on a turn or ends its turn there. So, okay, you so go I through the go wall. Through you're through damage. I guess I misunderstood it. Wrong. Yeah, if you're within its area, you'll have to take that damage. So, yeah. You know Plus, what? once you go through, then you're on the other side where the fire is. Yeah, but I got to get over there so I can see him. I'll do it. So, yeah. I'm going options, for it. T- take the Dex- damage or drop the, the wall. the dexterity save, right? That I have to make when I go through That's it. What I, th- I like, thought when you're last, I'll, I'll do it. I'm going to do it. I thought you were going to say, <laughs> I'm, just, I'm, I'm gonna going to drop through. the drop the spell. <laughs> I'm going through <laughs> nope. the spell. With the no. other way. He's probably going to drop it from I'm concentration drop. anyway. I'm game? dropping it. <laughs> okay. I'm dropping the spell. There's no more firewall. This thing's been too much Okay. Too I'm much sorry. I like your idea of just like boldly going through. It's just I thought about what I was doing it a few times too, but I was like, that's <laughs> a lot of damage to take. <laughs> All right. Firewall oh. gone. So what do these guys look like? What's the difference between them? Or is there no difference? The portraits just look different. Um you recognize one of them has been casting magic. Okay. Uh, the one that looks so, different from the rest as far as the tokens go. Uh, this one <clears throat> has been striding around boldly as it uh, has been casting silence. Um, I'll walk out of the range of its silence there, and I'm going to look at it and cast Phantasmal Killer. <laughs> so I have to make a wisdom save of 16. Phantasmal Killer. I haven't heard this one before. Oh, no, no, I have. Uh, 15. It is frightened of me. At the beginning of each of its turns, it's going to take 4d10 psychic damage as long as I'm within sight of it. Correct? Uh, yeah. Frightened for the duration. And it goes up in sight, I guess. Okay. All right. And the creature rears back at the sight of you, Mr. Misbit. I, Robot. It sees just like a giant like finch is what I turn into because finches eat spiders. <laughs> Very good. You guys don't see it, but that's what it sees. That would be like a spider person's nightmare, right? A giant bird. Yeah, absolutely. Natural predator. Commander Plus, uh 
screams forward silently out of the out of the zone of silence and uh, she raises her sword against the drider laying into it and then Mordecai you're up I'm sorry I keep oh, using man. the monster name my bad uh, I'm gonna go ahead and do the same thing I did last time but this time without disadvantage so hopefully things will go a little better we can see <laughs> So it's going to be a uh, Eldritch Blast, and then two Necrotic Blasts from my Bucky, my little friend. Okay. And these will be uh, normal, right? No, no disadvantage. That's correct, as far as I recollect. Yeah, because the wall's gone now. Good hits. Hit, hit. Twenty-two, Ooh. twenty-seven. Ooh. That'll be eight and twelve, so it's gonna be twenty for me. Okay. And there's and he's just gonna be pushed back uh, twenty feet. Okay. And then for Bucky seventeen. No yes. wanted to crit. Yeah, it was on the on the it edge wanted there. to. You saw that? <laughs> yeah, I saw it. I was looking at it. Oof. <laughs> and a 28. So close. And that's going to be 2d4 plus 7. So that's an extra 12. For a total of uh, 32 points of damage. Uh, that'll be the end of my turn. Good play. And does silence <clears throat> have a concentration, or does it just stay for the duration? Oh, thank you. Need concentration uh, checks. Like three of them. Oh, <laughs> uh, so close. And one more. Yeah. Really close. Okay. Sorry about that. All I right. Keep tabs on that. Almost. Okay. Will that be all from Mordecai? Yeah. That'll be the end of my turn. The... Uh, Spiders that were coming towards the group of you uh, have all dispersed, having been scared by the wall of fire and chosen different routes. And uh, you watch as the people continue just fleeing down the alleyways, uh, fleeing out of sight. They've uh, uh, seemed to have made their way out of the you know near proximity of danger, um, and are fleeing deep into the or uh, to the outskirts of the city rather. Yay. Um, Commander Plass is face to face with one of these beasts and one of her troops is uh, surrounded you can see a bit higher on the pictured on the map and the uh, creature who had been casting spells uh, walks swiftly up the side of the Grafa uh, going up uh, easily walking along its side it needs to make a wisdom save if this is the beginning of its turn Thank you. And it won't be able to move towards him. Oh, yeah. Psychic damage. Please deal your damage. Oh, I guess it's already on there. I oh. rolled it already. So 22 psychic damage. Whoa. Nice, nice. And it's frightened, so it can't move directly towards him either. And, and a concentration save from him as well. Thank you. This silence is going to be here forever. And disadvantage on ability checks and attack rolls too. And the monstrous spellcaster flees, scaling the side of the Grafa, going as high as it does far, uh, very quickly. And on the roof, uh, the one that you're engaging with, Jules, uh, it stands tall, 
uh, raising its long sword and it brings it down, flashing three times. An eight will miss. A 23. Will 23 hit. hits. A 13 will miss. The 13 minutes, yeah. Very good. A five, uh, five slashing damage as the sword uh, right. strikes you. I'll take it. And you see, uh, confronted by one of these spider monstrosities, uh, two of the guards fall as they combat it. And one is left. And next is Jules. Okay. Um, All right, I'm going to... How, how, does, how, how beat up does the spider look in front of me? Is it holding on about as well as I am? or That'd be a good comparison. Kind of going tit for okay. tat with it so far. <sighs> okay, then. Um... <laughs> if that's the case, then I'm gonna I'm gonna keep going. I'm All gonna right. keep going. I took that I took that last shot pretty well, so now I'm feeling cocky. He so, gets two um, more in that twenties. I'm gonna do another. I'm gonna do another. Uh, another. Uh, uh, what you call it? Steady aim. Okay. <gasps> oh, what? <laughs> <laughs> Okay, it's not two more nat 20s, but it is one nat 20. Hi, uh, Bro, Dang. which oh. devil did you make a deal with? Don't yeah, worry can about we it. get in I, I need his number. On your business. <laughs> on your call business. up Fellet, you know? Oof, damage isn't quite as good this time. It's only oh, whatever. 35 points. Oh, only? <laughs> <laughs> not as good. That was more than you got last time. <laughs> Uh, actually, it was pretty good, yeah. It didn't look as good. It looked like a lot of ones on there, but I guess it wasn't too bad. So yeah, 35. I can't believe this. And the <laughs> creature is taken aback uh, at the uh, power that you possess, and it begins to look about frantically, looking for its escape. Okay. Next. Will that be a fr- I'm sorry, go ahead. No, no. I, yeah, no, that's fine. I, I, it's a steady aim shot, so that's all I can do for the round. Okay. Um, so I'm just, I'm just, I'm just, I'm, um, Jules has got the crazy eyes now and he's just <laughs> looking right at him. <laughs> he's crazy. Like, <laughs> just bleeding profusely out of his face. <laughs> okay. Okay. That's and this <laughs> creature is swearing and, uh, you don't speak Elvish, right? Uh, actually I do speak Elvish. Ah, it's cursing your ancestors currently <laughs> um and next uh is yoshi ruke what a turn i'm gonna just open up my spell book see what i got close it and then i'm, I'm just gonna sit down <laughs> but that's it <laughs> i can't do anything <laughs> soft beneath you this is a very nicely kept park <laughs> There's nothing I can do. Reynold, you're up. All right. Well, uh, first order of business, Reynold's going to use the spiritual weapon to go ahead and uh, swing at the uh, spider. Jules is messing up pretty hard right now. Uh, spiritual weapon will get a non nat 20. A 20 hits. Okay. Uh, yeah, it's just basic level. You will deal 10 force damage to it. Okay. Um, and Reynold is going to move out 5, 10, 15, 20. 20 feet out. Uh, hmm. Uh, Captain, uh, the captain that's fighting, uh, Captain Plaz, it, are, do they look hurt at all? Um, 
they look as though they've been exchanging uh, sword play mm-hmm. with this drider. Any okay. wrong move uh, could mean danger. All right. Uh, what I'm going to do then is I'm going to... Okay. One, one last thing. Uh, can I get a read on how much that spider on the rooftop is hurt? I know I'm far away, and I may not get a good read on it, but just to see what I can see. This thing is badly injured and looking to flee uh, to save its own skin. Cool. What I'm going to do then is I'm going to go ahead and cast... Uh, yeah. I'm going to cast Guiding Bolt on it at a... Yeah. I'm going to cast Guiding Bolt at a first level. It is a 23 to hit. Hits. Uh, for 14 radiant damage. And as your spell strikes uh, the bolt of light, the flesh of this creature tears open and is slain outright. Don't worry, Jules. I, I know you did a lot of the work there. <laughs> I'm, I'm not taking this from you. You absolutely did most of that. Jules is bloody, sweaty, just not, and like he's got another blade and was coming in for a shot and it just exploded on him and he's just like, I had it. I know you did. And this look, <laughs> I know it was gonna be very cinematic. I just, you know, this one still counts as mine though. No, no, a hundred percent, a hundred percent. Okay. <laughs> in no world would I take this from you. And uh, Reynold is just going to move. I got five feet of movement left. I'm just gonna go towards. Uh, the, the uh, one that uh, Captain Plast is fighting. And that's going to be my turn. Okay. Then is Mr. Misbit. I'll move 30 feet closer to this guard that seems to be struggling. And look up at this spider he's fighting and cast Agonizer's Scorcher at it. Base level. So it's a DC 16. And I'm sorry, this is a deck save, right? Yeah, deck save. I should have said that. No, that's all right. Uh, let's see. Coming up. A four. All right, you take 17 fire damage. Okay. I'm just going to look up at him and be like, you could surrender now and drop your arms, or we could just you could end up like your other friends who are fleeing and dying. What Up language you. do you speak in? I think I speak... Let me check my languages. Because I'll just say it in all the languages I know. Oh, I didn't mark my languages. So let's just say common. That's all I know. That's fair. Uh, will that be all from Mr. Misbit? Yes. And <clears throat> Plas continues to swear off with this a large uh, upper torso of an elf uh, atop the bulbous body of just looks like a giant black widow um, exchanging sword strikes. Nothing really landing on either side yet. Mordecai, you're up. Uh, is the spellcaster within 150 feet of me? I'd have to do, uh, use the uh, ruler. Thank it's you. 140 feet. There you are. It sounds like he's just within range for fireball. Oh, no. Is he? <laughs> of course he would be. I <laughs> thought about doing that, but it's only one target. I know, but it's worth it. I've, it's been too long. Man. <laughs> <laughs> he's got a craving. He needs or, uh, I need it. <laughs> Okay. He's got I'm a an fever. Addict. I'm, He's scratching. I am an He's... addict for this. Yes. The only prescription is more fireball. Please, please fire do ball, not judge me ball. for what I am about to do. <laughs> Bahamut, forgive me. me. <laughs> oh. Oh, that's oh. not that great. It's yeah, a lot of dice, suck. though. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so you it looks make cool. the save here. Yeah, just kind of keeping it real, man. Yeah. That, that was actually terrible. That's a fourth level fireball. Yeah. 
and that was a to save. Day. Yeah, so that's half of that. So take that <laughs> nine points of damage. But it is a beautiful conflagration uh, that erupts around this uh, spellcaster. And then uh, he's going to also be taking uh, another two necrotic uh, bolts. And the concentration saves. You can't forget those. <laughs> and the wisdom save to take damage. It's not his turn yet. <laughs> oh, sorry. I just thought we were just piling it up, you know. He's piling it on. <laughs> 12. Is that? Yeah, that'll save. Yeah. Oh, that's right. That's it only took 10 20. points of damage. Yeah. Okay. So that's a 25 to hit. Well. Oh, 25 will hit. And this is from Bucky, right? Yes. Okay. And who are you aiming at? Uh, the same, uh, the same spider, the, the caster. Okay. Uh, his range is also 150 feet with these. Very good. 25 will hit. The 18. 18 will miss. Okay. So that's going to be another uh, 2d4 plus 7. I'll take that. 11. So 20 damage total with mine okay very good that'll be the end of my turn actually sorry Ben I'm gonna use my full movement to get closer okay and so uh, as well as Bucky too okay and as you give chase uh, to these creatures, these monsters, uh, they begin to uh, see that you are stronger foes than they would prefer to reckon with, and they begin to make their retreat. As they do, a swarm of insects, like a fountain, surges out of the pit on, near the corner of the graffa, and behind it is the gaping maw of a scorpion, hooded like a cobra uncoiling its long tail to come to the surface. The beast screams and the fountain of insects ceases. They swarm the area like a swift typhoon with its own consciousness. This creature is 20 or more feet tall. And will you all please make wisdom saving throws? I'm actually pretty good at those. Uh, I don't suppose I actually thing. succeeded. I'm going to go ahead and use my uh, own luck on this. Oh, let's go. Is this yes. Frightful Presence I'm saving 15. up, saving against? <laughs> we're, we're blessed still, right? No, that's a long, long time ago. Uh, it's not I'm last still time. trying to kill this Strider spellcaster so we can hopefully get information on him. Uh, I guess I'll just roll a wisdom. And but I don't know if... Oh, uh, combat probably ended there, so it probably wouldn't flow over to the next round to damage him. Yeah, I don't. I don't suppose this is frightful presence, is it, Ben? Does your armor specify f uh, frightful presence from a dragon? I believe it does. Yes. Okay. In, that, in this case, it will not apply. No. <laughs> and That's a t twenty-one total for me. Okay, and I believe Joel has the highest, or excuse me, Mordecai has the highest. Um, I figured out the mess up with my spell save DC. Why I was saying sixteen on my roll and seventeen on my character sheet. Oh, really? The roll isn't counting my uncommon item. I had a plus one magic focus. Ah, okay. Uh, yeah, that'll do it. I see, I see. So as this creature crawls out of the depths, you all find yourself taken with fear, immobilized, watching as this unfolds before you, and the beast swiftly climbs the exterior of the graffa, the drider retreating with it. As you look about or are struck still you see the soldiers gathered as well peering up in horror and as it climbs the exterior it almost seems to blink through the air as it quickly rises the soldiers begin to lose heart and flee the driders retreat also climbing the graffa and it seems as though you have made uh, the best of whatever efforts you could here uh, to protect the retreating people.
But this battle is lost. And it Commander Plus approaches you quickly as the fear uh, that has been gripping uh, the entire city kind of uh, begins to uh, falter a bit. And Commander Plus approaches you. Yoshiruki, Mr. Misbit, I need you with me. I'm just going to look back at the Very games. well. Um, I'm sorry I can't go against my programming. I have to defend the Grotha. That is what we are doing. I'm telling the rest of the party. Oh, I apologize. <laughs> well, uh, I mean, yeah, yeah you're, you seem pretty damn capable, so I, I can trust you in this. We gotta mm. probably do a lot, of, a lot of work now. Yoshiruki, I need you. For what? We must see to the mechanisms you designed, if you still care about them. How the hell am I supposed to get out of this situation? Uh, whatever, then. The devil take you. Commander so, Platz throws up her hands. Come, I'm misfit, with question. me. And Who was she... the one that powered me up and chose bodyguard? I'm sorry? Who was the one that powered me up and chose bodyguard? I can't remember who it was. I think it was Mordecai that chose bodyguard. It was Mordecai or Jules. I think we, I think we kind of both. Because you gave me. us the options and, 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 and we were all kind of like bodyguard? <laughs> I think I switched it to uh, fighter mode. Or like... You, yeah, you flipped the fighter switch. Yeah. I know I said bodyguard, but I feel like somebody else said it too. But I, I You don't. just enabled lethal mode when you flipped the switch. But um, whoever enabled bodyguard, I'm going to go up to and be like, I do have to fulfill this function, but this is the best I can do. I'm going to take my plate armor off my half plate and give it to him. It's a half plate of fire resistance. To me? Whoa. Oh, very nice. I, I don't have that anymore, but whoever chose bodyguard, I have to fulfill my function and give that to you. It's the best I can do. My primary function is protecting the Grotha, though, so I'm following the captain after that. <laughs> oh, jeez. Uh, th what? Thanks? I look up the different types of armor. <laughs> Stay safe and hopefully yeah. we'll meet again. As he turns and walks away, I look down like, I can't. This is too heavy. <laughs> I don't think I can wear this, wear that either. Well, I guess we have it now. And as terror has gripped the city and these monstrosities have climbed the tower, they're now claiming uh, Mordecai, in your head, you hear a familiar voice. One you might not expect. Magpie. She says, come get your book. I can only hold him so long. Oh no. And that's where we'll end, end the adventure for this evening. That can't be good. <laughs> oh, come on. I want to I want to oh, thank geez. everybody for hanging out, for joining the adventure, oh. as always. Uh, Mitch, Arctic Wolf, Thank you guys for joining the game. It's been a pleasure having you. And, um, yeah, of course, for everybody, um, you know, who hangs out watching the games, join us on our Discord. You know, come hang out. We got things going on, yeah. kind of. Things here and there. We're hilarious. Kind of, sort of. Yeah, you know. Yeah. Yeah. Until next time, yeah. uh, the adventure continues. And...